Zero Podcast is powered by you. And if you want to support us, you can do so via Patreon. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. And as a thank you for your support, you get cool stuff and we get to keep doing what we do. Now let's get into it. Hello friends and welcome to the 11st episode of the Xbox Era podcast. I'm Sick Mechanico and I'm back and I'm joined as usual by a special Nick. What's going on? Hey dear Nick, it's been a long time. It's, yeah, been, it it's been a week well. and a bit. Yeah. And we're joined as well this week by Abe, aka One Bad Other. How are you doing Abe? I'm great. Uh, good evening John and good morning Nick. Yeah. Hi, right, mate. Long time. time zones. Time zones. And mm. as usual, big thank you, big mad props for all the button pushing and lever pulling of Jesse, aka Don Cabeza. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing very well. And I'm going to say, Abe, you can turn your gain up a smidge. You're a little low. Oh, well, there, there you go. go. And John is this. super loud. Am I super loud? Well, yeah, no, like you weren't ridiculously until, loud. Yeah, I think you got closer <laughs> to the mic. It's because I'm all energetic. I'm all fired up. You're like very loud. I'll whisper from now on. Let's go all ASMR yeah. on this. No, let's Ooh, not do that. Hey, Yosemite Blam has a really good question. Can we address sick not liking to do podcasts with more than one Greek person? <laughs> me and Zorka, me and Zorka last week were like, yeah, John's been weirdly absent anytime there's an extra Greek person it's on the podcast. It's true. I'm like, oh God. Well, I can only handle one. You know, mm. like as soon as it goes above one, you know, you'll start using weird words. That I don't understand. Mm. Start talking about mm. crazy things. We you know. we started talking Greek for the first forty seconds of the podcast last week, and the goal was to do that intentionally to get you upset. We're like, we'll just start talking Greek and see how John reacts to that. <laughs> and he didn't <laughs> even show. Sure. Yeah. I outwitted you this time. Um, yeah. It's been a it's been a relatively quiet week for news, but um, has it? Well, ish. Though. There's there's some things to talk about, but before we get into it. Let's let's go around the table and see if anyone's been playing anything new or anything regular this week. We'll start with Abe today. Have you been playing any video games lately, Abe, seeing as this is a video game podcast about video games? <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I, I finally passed the 400-hour uh, mark in Halo Infinite, so I've been playing playing dead games, trying to keep, you know, keep resuscitating them. Uh, you come out of bronze, bronze level yet? Have you hit... Have you hit- <laughs> Silver. Look at John talking that shit. You know what? Just let me get you, John, with uh, with no desync and and your toast. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Let's blame Say- the lag like like an Australian Greek would. Sure. No. That lag uh, but is that, real, man. <laughs> but that and I started that I started to give uh, Trek to Yomi a little uh, give that a shot. I don't mind that game. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I, I visually, it's really nice. I that yeah. I, I'd love to see two D games start to get to that level of visual fidelity because I I do like the way two D games play. Um, yeah, and so that was that's an interesting look. But you know, the gameplay is a little bit simplistic. I, I would have liked to seen a little bit more depth to it. But you know, overall, I'm I'm still enjoying just kind of looking at it. For me, it's, it's not it's, responsive enough. Right, There's something. It's a not off tight off enough. Or... It doesn't feel tight enough. Yeah. That's my issue right. with it. Yeah, I bounced off it pretty quick. I have to admit, it's still installed, and I might go back to it. But um, yeah, what about I you? Will. It's roughly five or six hours. It's it's not too long of a commitment. Yeah, but I want all the collectibles, and there's like a hundred and fifty of them. God, no, I, so I don't it's gonna take a while. It. That's like a job. Yeah. I don't understand the collectibles. I know, thing, but... <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help myself. It's who he is. It's, it's who he is. It's, <laughs> just, it's a, it's a at that point, that I, I, I uninstall games at that point. Like, it just starts to feel like I'm going back. To, I might as well punch into work and, and do something that I can put on my resume at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, go I play the Stanley Parable, man. And then you'll okay. understand I, the true I've heard joy good, of collectibles. <laughs> I've heard good things about that game, though, actually. I, I think I do need to give that a shot. So. You do. I promise, promise you, you'll have a really good time with it once. Especially if you, if you love game design. I'm tempted to install Sniper Elite 5. I've never played a Sniper Elite game. It's so good. And it it's seems so like good. it would be up my alley. It yeah, seems I've, like that. I've dabbled in it this week. I've played about an hour and a half or so, and it's like 
it, it, do you know what? I've played a couple of them, and it feels it feels a lot better to play than previously. I, did, I, I think I missed four. I played three, and I played a bit of Zombie it's Army. It's still Trilogy better than four, same thing. because four started at 30, and they eventually FPS boosted and then um, patched it. But this is just built for that better frame rate right from the start, and it feels a lot better. Yeah, it's it's way more responsive, and, and I don't think I'll ever get tired of killing Nazis. Um, the slow mo, yeah, the X ray right. stuff, it's it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. But I think the mechanics yeah. of it, the fact that they've really expanded the levels, and you can really think about the different ways you're going to approach targets, and you know, are you going to blow it up, or are you going to cut the power, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I started to dabble, and it, it gets a bit Hitman esque at points. So, yeah, good little game. But <laughs> you've been playing anything else, Nick, or is it just the usual suspects? Rocket League. Rocket there he League is, with my, representing. My boy. My boy's T-shirt of uh, Rocket League. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I was playing, yeah, Halo, because that new event started. Um, That's fun, by the way. Yeah. How, how, do you like, how do you like the land grab? Mm. Yeah, I've been playing land that grab, well. Land grab is another one of those frustrating modes where if you don't have a team of four that's, that's coordinating, it's yeah. a terrible experience. Like, it's... yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I played every time I played land grab during the week, it was with three, a team of three. So we always ended up with a random fourth and that random fourth left almost every single time. And we ended up with a bot and it's just like, this is no longer fun. Yeah. This I just, just, I just smashed through all of the challenges and I'm down to the last weekly, which is just play three more games of land grab, but I did it yeah. all solo. And yeah, that, but that was one thing that became extremely prevalent was, oh, I'm up against a team of the four. This is horrible. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I won some of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's it's fun. It's fine. Um, I, you know, I think I've only played the new map three times after about, I don't know, three or four hours worth of playing, which feels a bit frustrating. But Very Halo 3. That very halo 3 i it's love the combo so of full runner and vegetation growing over it whoever did that what's art. that what's that map called in halo 3 i couldn't remember the name of citadel it. probably is what you're thinking or uh you know the one that's got that circle area in the middle and then you've yeah, got the with two the platform and the rocket look above it yeah 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 um, what was that map called epitaph. I epitaph yes i think it was called epitaph it reminded me so much of that map so yeah, much. lovely art style it's really nice i like that map i like that new map that's a good map um yeah i, I kept getting invited into xbox live parties during the week when they when i was playing by hargeet chani and that group and again every time i go into that party chat and there's like 14 people in it all talking at once and you're just like man back in 2007 is... Oh my god, this is so confronting. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm too used to just talking with one or two other people, maybe four or five. But when yeah. you have like fourteen in there, and they're all talking, and like, you know, there's a couple of Aussies in there. They're like, "Hey, Nick, Collingwood sucks." Blah 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 blah. They're all just giving me crap straight away. And then there some like you'd have two or three holding their own conversation, then in another two or three holding a separate conversation, and it is just. Full on. And I join them because I, I don't want to ignore them. I don't want them to think that I'm some, you know, pretentious, arrogant prick or whatever. I mean, I sort of am, but I don't want them to think <laughs> that. <laughs> no, yeah, you know what? So they don't think that. Just, just I, own it. <laughs> I, I sort of am, but I don't want them to think that. So I join out of courtesy So because I don't want to look like a bastard. So I join and then I'm like, well, look, guys, I'm playing Rocket League because that's all I play. I'm like, I'm playing Rocket League. I left the team chat that I was in, so I probably need to go back. But yes, bit of Halo, bit of Rocket League, bit of Fortnite. The usuals. The, usual. <laughs> the usuals. We have a couple of Super Chats already. Yeah, we do. Far away. Uh, Faisal, thanks for improving the quality on Metacritic. <laughs> Well, that's a great segue into talking about that <laughs> wonderful piece of news. So, indeed, I, I am having a celebratory uh, cider this evening uh, because, yeah, we went through a rather grueling process. Um, you know, and I, I won't talk too much about it because it's probably not my place to, but um, Metacritic are very careful about who they allow on. So all of the mm, hilarious tweets out. I've been reading over the last 
uh, 24 hours. One of them really made me like, I literally was laughing out loud. I actually did a lol in real life. Mm. Um, yeah, we went through that process um, and we had a conversation and yeah, we're really, really pleased. I think it's uh, it's an incredible testament to a lot of the work that the review team does, in particular, Jesse. Um, mm. And you, you know, as a, <laughs> as a team, we're super stoked because it it's really where we wanted the direction we want to be going in, right? We're not in really in the influencer game. We genuinely want to build a community for people that enjoy this platform. I think we're doing that. I think we're succeeding, and this is just the next step for us. So, super mm. pleased, super proud. Very cool moment. Yeah. Um, there's some and real, I, and I love. Cool. I love the way old screenshots are already coming out of jokes I made in the Discord two, two years, years ago, ago, three Maybe years three. ago, yeah. three years ago about how, hey, let's get Xbox Zero on Metacritic so we can pump up the score. I can't even remember what game we were talking about that day. Crackdown 3, I mean, probably enough. It probably, it probably was Crackdown 3. <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> now you know we're joking, well, Twitter. It, it, yeah, it probably was Crackdown 3. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, just, the score would have gone up if Nick was allowed to review Crackdown 3. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I would have given Crackdown 3 a far higher score. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have gone out of control and given it like a 9 or a 10 or anything, but yeah, I'm sure I, mean, I would have given it a better score than most. It, it is amusing seeing all of the... I mean, and I, I don't know. There was one... I have to find it because it, 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 really, it really made me like, what? Is this a real thing? But yes, of course it is. It's, it's, it's Twitter. Um, one guy tagged, I was surprised he didn't chat, tag Joe Biden, but, um, <laughs> the Metacritic FTC. corruption is nuts. Tagged the FTC, uh -huh. the head of the FTC, <laughs> tagged Sony and PlayStation and Yosp and Herman Holst. Um, <laughs> you guys need to do something. Microsoft is buying out gaming media. It's like, do they, do they know we gave Gears Tactics a six and a half out of 10? Do they know we gave uh, Sea of Thieves a pirate? The irony of all that, but it's the like... irony of all that is that if you talk, if you ask Jesse about the conversations, private conversations that Jesse and I have had, I'm like, don't you dare give this game a 10. We are not in the business of giving games 10s. I'm not going to allow it. Look, I've only done it twice <laughs> like, for the same reason. Like, that's the irony of it. I'm like so anti-10. Like I, any game, I don't care. I'm anti-10. I And maybe that's because I'm old school. And I believe that for a game to get a 10, it has to be like borderline perfection, once in a generation, you know, unbelievable uh, example of the art form of video ah, games. Okay, and so yes. I'm I'm gonna be doing Red Dead Redemption two. That's definitely a ten. And Super Mario Odyssey is the only ten. Oh God, that I give belongs. That we'll be that founding belongs. Nintendo era any day now. Yeah, so many people have been saying that to me. You know, um, the irony is if Nick, if you were able to to score the PlayStation games, Killzone would have a higher score. Killzone, uh, yeah, that's right. That's the thing. <laughs> you should be wanting me reviewing PlayStation games because Killzone Shadowfall would probably be a much higher Metacritic score if it, you know if I was reviewing PlayStation games, <laughs> and if I was reviewing Nintendo games, they'd probably be even higher as well. <laughs> but yeah, long story short, uh, if if yeah. It, don't get your knickers in a twist, Twitter. We're not, we're not coming, uh, we're not coming for you. And I, if you actually read the reviews and actually look at the general content of the site, there's no bias. Like, yes, we review Xbox and PC games, but we're not out to kiss ass. It doesn't get us anything. We don't get swag behind the scenes. We're not influencers. You know, no one's sending us cool stuff. So, um, oh, wish. yeah. But yeah, be sure would be nice. I'd love some cool swag, but um, we've chosen a different path. Oh no, I do, I do have one thing coming. It's on its what, way, but I already you, I already talked about that. What do you have? You know that see see that cool Game Gear that exploded Game Gear. Oh in the yeah, background? yeah, you got the pad one. Well, uh, yeah, I bought the Game Gear, but that company is sending me their Xbox controller version. That's very nice of them. It's it's on its way. Ooh, you'll have to show it. Do a little video of it. I'm gonna review. I'm gonna I'm gonna review it. They're like, oh, we'll send you the Game Gear. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll buy the Game Gear. You, if you want, send me the Xbox controller if you're doing an Xbox controller. They're like, okay. Nice. I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll review that. Nice. They're really cool. They're great. Yeah, they sound like a good Um, Yeah, so I'm going to review it, and I'll do like an unboxing and 
because I've never yeah. done stuff like that before. So I don't know how I'm going to pull that off, but I'll try something. You can get you can get some cool little tripod kits off of uh, Amazon and stuff for like 15, 15 quid or probably a hundred Australian dollars. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's cool. It's cool, cool, cool week for us. Um, one other piece but, of news that I'll just briefly mention is some absolute maniac, aka Suki Rude, started a. Uh, seeding of IP against IP owned by Xbox and Bethesda. Um, it's causing carnage. There's a thread on the forums where you have to vote and each vote will kill an IP and then it will go to the next bracket and so on until we've left with one oh, that's like that. IP. Oh my God, that's kind of like that very short-lived podcast game we did in the earlier yes. episodes of the podcast. Episodes one to five with fun. The, the, the kill your baby podcast yeah. game that we did i can't I believe gears back. is going out in the first round by the way so if anybody to fall out kind of, yeah, oh good well i think so that's fair should. to be honest that was that, that was a rough uh first round matchup yeah there was uh, some there was some brutal choices there to be fair but um yeah, yeah go go have a gander on the forums if you want yeah. to have a look it's a good laugh but yes everyone there there are for those watching that are upset about the fact that we're a metacritic there's a million and one sites on there called playstation something Nintendo something, blah, 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 blah. Like, we're not the first Xbox site on there with Xbox in their name. There's plenty of them on there. It's okay. Yeah. You'll be okay. Um, anyway, video but, game news. Video wait, game news. Wait, one more super chat. Oh, one more me. super chat before it gets lost. One more super chat, which will lead to a bit of discussion anyway. Georgie, Nick still stands with Indie Exclusive or Jez is right? Now, this is odd because so what's happened is on Xbox Two, Jez, I don't know, I don't, I didn't listen, I was asleep, but Jez apparently mentioned Indiana Jones being multi plat. The thing is, this is old. So we had a rumor mill last year in August or September where I said Indiana Jones, I've been told that Indiana Jones is Xbox exclusive. And I also put it out on Twitter, but Jez replied to me back then back in August, saying that he believes it's multi-plat. So this isn't something new. So Jez is just repeating old information that he heard almost a year ago. So, and he said himself, that could have changed, blah, blah, blah. So now on Twitter, it's been a back and forth with me and Jez and people tagging both of us. Oh, Nick is, as far as I know, Indiana Jones is still exclusive. As far as I'm aware, it's still exclusive. Uh, and as everyone knows, I generally, unless new information comes to hand, <laughs> Darkwing Duck, and some may have about something, but yeah, unless new information comes to hand, I generally will die on a hill if a source tells me something. <laughs> so until I hear otherwise, until I hear otherwise, as far as I know, Indiana Jones is still exclusive. So. Jez and I have only publicly clashed once before, for the record, because everyone's like, I'm going to stick with Jez, because Jez doesn't lie like you or make stuff up, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Jez and I have only publicly clashed once before, and that was over Starfield. And Jez said, nah, Starfield's cross-gen. And I'm like, no, 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 Starfield's next-gen only. And Jez is like, I reckon you're going to be wrong about that. And I said, I don't think I will. <laughs> Starfield's next-gen only. So... At the moment, publicly, it, I'm one and O against Jez. We'll see how we go with the Indiana Jones. We'll see well, if that ties up the score or if I go two and O. You say you're one and O, but I would say it's one all because because of shrimp and the truth behind the shrimp, right? So, <laughs> like, I know you've come up with some sort of oh, it was all just a joke, like to the people that you know. The it masses. was. I you wasn't even involved. You don't want to. You don't want to reveal the truth about the shrimp. But Jez knows. Jez that makes told the story. Up. Jez told the story himself on our podcast that he I was know. drunk <laughs> when it came to the shrimp. So, yeah. Anyway. Um. Uh, I, like I said, you guys all know me. Even if it turns out I'm wrong, I'm still going to stick to my guns unless I hear otherwise. So, fair yeah, enough. I will stick with Indiana Jones being exclusive. Cool. Um, speaking of uh, new video games, I know um, Indiana Jones is a fair way away, we think. Um, but another new video we game got announced. And uh, I know, Nick, I, I remember privately in the Discord, you, you mentioned that we should keep an eye on 
May 27th. And indeed, that was yesterday, if memory serves. And we saw the announcement for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now, I've yep. played... I didn't complete the first one. Um, and it's probably one I really do need to go back to, especially now it's all got its fancy enhancements Good game. Series X. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think there's a lot of genuine excitement um, for Survivor. Should be good. Yeah. Looking interesting. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping what I heard about that game a long time ago rem- holds true, but then I saw the timeline of it and I'm not sure how that would work. So apparently it's set five years after the first game and it's set around the same time as the Obi-Wan TV show, apparently. Now... Hmm. Yeah. I, I had heard that Darth Maul might be in it. But then I'm like, that doesn't oh, line up with the timeline, does it? Unless it's like a clone Darth Maul. No, Darth, Maul was, Darth... Darth Maul did not die in the first movie. What? What's he just popped in half, and then he got a spider bottom. And but yeah, no, he was still around. So he what? could still be around because yeah, because I had heard just over a year ago that <laughs> Darth Maul they were they they may get Darth Maul in Jedi Fallen Order too. Um, but again, that was like. That was over a year ago, so I don't know if that's changed. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I put tweets out there, so I can't hide from it. I, I put... there's a, like I've got a couple of tweets out there, so... Um, I just... When I saw the timeline, I got confused. I thought, well, how can Darth Maul be there? Because I don't follow the Star Wars lore that much. I did yeah. hear that Maul was in the Clone Wars cartoon or something yep, like that. He was that. in yeah. both the cartoons a lot. Really? In a nutshell, Star Wars is for kids, and I, I stopped watching it uh, in, with any real interest a long while ago. Um, yeah. You know, I'll still watch them, but I'll also be like, oh. they don't. They, yeah. yeah, it's it, it. The the last game was really good. I did finish that. One. It was. That, this it was one, a good game. Yeah, it was really well designed. It was, uh, and and I, this is like they really use the IP really well with the, the yes. force powers and it was a touch janky it was a touch yeah that was janky. my only my only complaint like if that game was running at a smooth 60 frames and mm. was you know there was no technical hiccups in it probably would have been like a high eight type of game to me probably the next best star wars uh related game since knights of the old republic the first one for me <gasps> uh personally hello force yeah, unleashed what? Force Unleashed. I loved the Force Unleashed. That's a games, good right? game. Force Unleashed was a good game. They I, can't I really like those. They were su- and the first one is X enhanced. Um, so it looks great. Uh, and I think the second one got FPS boosted, but I could be very wrong on that. My, my memory, I could be wrong. But yeah, I, I, I like the Soulsborne. Well, I'm a huge Soulsborne fan, so the fact they got a little bit of that design in there is uh, makes that game better. So, uh, just, but yeah, this is next gen only, right? Unreal. Yes. Unreal great. five. Is it? Did they confirm? I don't know if they did or not, uh, but not sure. I would expect I it to so. look a lot better regardless. It'll be very pretty, but I, I yeah. big shout out to respawn for being the best designer of, uh, robots and now droids ever. Like the, the mm. droid in the first game, glad to see him back. They so just now and there's a Lego like, set that got yeah, links. Sure. Yep. Mm. I mean, understandably, he's a really cute little droidy mm. thing. Like whoever does yeah. the droids, BB-8 was pretty good, but that little yeah, one, BB-8 was cool. They're all good. They're all good, but lots of fun yeah. to be had, and I'm sure um, we'll see more of that over the next month or so. Oh yeah, I think I think that'll be yeah. If they can improve on everything in the first game, next year. We had a small. Whoa. Issue. Whoa! Is I am now. now that was I am now yard, special, not us. Nick. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was worried. I was worried that was me for a second. No, there. that was, was Streamyard. Like, not my internet. You know what? That is. That has to be me. Streamyard. That, that oh, just you has to be me. Babe? I know. Every I time was... I come on, something <laughs> fucking happens. <laughs> I I was so worried. Then I'm like, oh my god, is that my internet going? I was like, oh no. <laughs> I, I just carry, I carry Jinx with it when it comes to internet, whether you're in my party and my Halo party, it's like, everybody's like, oh, why is, man. why, why do my issues seem to come up when I play with you? And, and then I'm here. Maybe there is something. Uh, I, don't I don't know. know. But I, I, don't I, know. I, I was saying that if they can like <laughs> tighten it up and polish it up, 
um, it would it can be something truly, truly fantastic. Like I, I always said about the first Fallen Order, there is a game of the year sitting there under all that mm. jank. Yes, like yeah, I agree. Th- th- there's a real genuine game of the year sitting there underneath it. So if they can clear up that jank, po- make make the combat. Because remember, who who who? It's Stig. Is Stig the one doing Fallen Order two? And he did the first Fallen Order. Stig, formerly of Sony Santa Monica, he was he was one well, of the I'm guys sure. on God of War. Yeah, yeah, I know who you mean. So, I'm so not if sure he can make. Is it, oh, I can't remember. Maybe I'm wrong if it's not Stig, but I thought it was Stig. It was, he, yeah, it was him on the first one. I don't know on the second one yet, but I'd imagine. If, you so. know, he, he's from Santa Monica and did God of War. So if they can make Fallen Order feel tighter and more like God of War, um, as in the OG God of Wars, uh, that would be really, really good. You'd be a happy man. To. Yeah, it should be a great game. Excellent. Um I'm just looking at my order of subjects here. Um, other new video games, or is it old video games? Old or video games. The mm. same video games with new names that are new, but are named after old video games. Either way, Modern Warfare 2 is releasing <laughs> October yeah. 28. Oh. Um, I really enjoyed yep. Modern Warfare. Some Loved really, really it. cool Loved stuff. Loved it. And I'm, mm. I normally get really, really bored of call of duty's level design but there is a lot of uniqueness in there Mm. um this will be great it should be fun all right it's infinity ward (laughs) we're going to see the release of presumably of warzone 2 because activision have to make their money right um or Mm. microsoft will have to make activision's money pending (laughs) approval it's Um, a very (laughs) that's a weird situation and then the marketing deal with Sony, because Tom Henderson was like, oh, the deal probably goes through to 2025 or 2026. Don't know about that. I think his maths are three games. Well, that's the thing. Was he? Because again, I didn't read. If there was an article, I didn't read it. I just saw the tweets. Is he basing that off the number of games or is he basing it off the actual year the deal ends? I think he was basing it off the number of games and didn't really think number of games actually is multiple in the space of like yeah, 18 months like, versus like 20, one game a year. 2026 i really doubt that like i'm like it, this year was obvious because sony's mm-hmm. got the early beta i think um uh, they haven't they don't seem to have the marketing based on the slide we saw of theirs i don't know well um well, guess we'll find out. I, there may be people in the Sony camp going, Ugh, you know, this is likely going to go through. Do we want to? Do we want to market this? And I, I would imagine that they would, right? Um, it, it would be very odd to not see oh, if they paid got for it. Early access to the beta, so I think they still yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. There we go. I think that's answered yeah, the question, it, then, right? It, it was odd. I mean, that came up on their their own conference, and they didn't seem to throw it out there. But yeah, I don't know why they would give that up for now. At least try to bridge that gap until they get their own ready, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, keep the keep I, the the Call of Duty base on their platform as long as they can. I, I'm I'm going to stick to what I said from the start. I still think that this year that that the deal will probably run for this year and next year, mm-hmm. and will probably run out next yeah. year, and then. I think once the deal closes, once the Activision deal closes, you'll get all the old CODs yeah. on Game Pass, maybe up to and including maybe Modern Warfare 2019 mm-hmm. or one after. I don't know. Yeah. And then once the deal with Sony, once Activision's deal with Sony runs out, I reckon 2024 is probably when you'll get CODs on Game Pass, as in brand new CODs on Game Pass. Yeah, From I think- 2024 on, I think. But... Again, I, I don't well, know. That's just what I think. I wonder, if it's a three-game deal, wouldn't that be... I mean, they, they'll have a game this Modern year, Warfare. then they'll take a next year off, right? And then they're going to have two, two games in 24. Yeah. And then yeah, but do they, do they just put something out next year to get that obligation out of the way? There's been rumors about standalone zombie games, so that could be... Yeah, they do, do, they do, do they find a loophole to get a third game out? And say, well, this is... I mean, have a look at Bungie. Microsoft said, you guys want out? We want two more Halo games. 
So what did they do? They put out Reach and they put out something smaller, ODST. Do Activision just, they've got Modern Warfare game number one, Warzone 2 game number two. Do they just mm-hmm. put, do they make sure they get a COD out next year and Microsoft helps them and throws resources at it to get it out and get it in good shape and get a game out? Or do they pull an ODST and go, here's this cool little expand alone zombies game thing, Call of Duty zombies. Look at this, blah, blah, blah. And then that's game number three. Yeah, there, there's, uh, there's ways around these things. I do wonder if... You or know, just tear up the contract. <laughs> you, I don't you, think and I have, you and I have said, Nick, on this podcast, right, that, and I know, I think Jez, Jez is on the lines of the deal, if it closes, will close next year. You and I are a little bit more optimistic. and we're, I we're still both, think it's this year. We're, we're heading, you know, we're dying on the hill together on this one, October-ish yep. of 2022. Still say this year. Um, and if that does happen, I don't see how a marketing deal can prevent a simultaneous release of whatever 2023's Call of Duty is on Game Pass. Now, there may be a stipulation in there with whatever deal they signed, but whatever deal they signed was like before Game Pass years existed. Ago. Before Game Pass existed. Yeah, that's true. Because well, these are four-year deals, and that's the thing to keep in mind. Like this, these are all, as far as my understanding, they've always been done in four-year increments. So mm. when they would have signed this deal, that was when Game Pass wasn't what people think of it today right yeah, well, i mean yeah that's right about- not at all so they hadn't even started putting games day one yet i don't think so so my prediction is still that they're all going to still come to sony's platform they they all have the option to continue to do the marketing deals but i do think microsoft will still be able to do game pass day one and even if they're you would just think that there that there'd be a, an opportunity to negotiate in there anyways right so yeah. like i i feel like it's going to be really hard to keep the 2024 games off of game pass and that's why i don't think microsoft needs to do anything desperate like put out an odst type thing game like uh, right now the most important thing for that license is that that license stays gets back to being known as a great ip and it's lost a lot of you know i think it's lost a lot of steam in the last couple years and so I'd be really surprised if they tried to rush something half-assed out. I think they're going to yeah. probably do what they plan to do and and wait it out to 2024, make it as good as they can, uh, and then make sure that you know Activision can not put every single thing on Call of Duty. You know, start to space out some of the other games they can make. That's just my prediction. You know, just uh, from reading in between. Yeah, they've got some good studios right? there. Let's let's see that. Yeah. Let's see them flex a little bit um, and hopefully breathe. Now, before we get into other subjects, I think we've got another super chat. Uh, yes, we do. From Morgan Mason, stuck at work during another show, so I'll have to catch the video on demand. Cheers, all. Keep up the stellar work. Thanks. Now. Whilst, whilst we're talking to our wonderful audience, 222 of you watching yet, and you're all lovely, by the way, but yet there's only 52 likes on this video. So if you're sitting with your mm. phone in your hand or your tablet on your lap or you're sitting in front of a PC like a proper nerd, hit that mm. like button. Pretty please. It helps us out. Um, but thank you for hanging out with us today um, for the 11th episode of the Xbox Zero podcast. Mm. Now, um, I'm going to do all other video game news. So there's one other bit here which is replaced is delayed to 2023 due to the ongoing war and issues in ukraine i'm you know no no worries devs take your time stay safe all of that jazz i'm bummed because i was really really looking forward to this game i thought it looks incredible um Mm, right up my alley um i'm Mm. still fervently hoping somerville launches this year because that is on my uh go-to list to play i love those kinds of games so um best of luck to to the to the studio um hopefully that they can take their time stay safe and, and get yeah. the game done but it seems microsoft is and you know this is just a quick topic for on this subject microsoft is not having a good time with no, picking not, developers no. in other regions of the world for games on exclusives to game pass or in general stalker 2 mm. atomic heart Yes, it's going to be a rough year, and in already what is the quiet year now, especially with Starfield being delayed, Redfall being delayed. There's still a lot of that open question about what have Microsoft going to show release for 2022. The only thing I can think that might be coming that's AAA, it's Goldeneye, that's AAA <laughs> um, and worth people's time is <laughs> More than Forza, Forza Motorsport Eight. 
That's the only thing I can think of really at this point that they can be like, boom. Can't there you go. Maybe. But that's an if. Nah, I don't even contraband. know if that's ready. Contraband. Yeah, no way. No. No, no way. Chance. Yeah. No I, way. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think this is just going to be one of those years. Like we always thought. I remember like when we looked at even after the Bethesda purchase, like when we were trying to plan out, like what's the cadence going to look like for our Xbox over the next five years or four years or whatever? Like there was always this big gap. And it, originally it was supposed to be 2021 because Halo was supposed to be out the year before. 2021 was going to be the painful year. Everything got pushed back. So 2021 had games. Now the, that that gap year is 2022. Um so I mean, uh, it, it, it's 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 bad for this year, but I just think they'll they'll end up taking taking the hits, and and there's going to be a the the shortages the chip shortage is going to last through this year anyway. So it's like it honestly it it could be a blessing in disguise in a weird weird way. And I know people don't want to hear this, as you know, we all want our games now, but <laughs> but if next year if they got like the first half now lined up with games, and they and now you actually got a cadence through the entire year. Activision Blizzard closes. You got Diablo. You got all these other things that got pushed back. I mean, next year should be. I know we. All, I know it's always like being a Detroit sports fan. It's always like, oh, no, wait till the draft. Then wait till next year. I really think this is the one. <laughs> this is for sure. Uh, like this is lining up that you know, and that's usually the turning point in a generation too. Like usually it's like that third, fourth year where the casuals start to look to you know to upgrade right and uh you know maybe they'll drop the series s price and things so i think they they're they're setting up that way um they're they're always there's always going to be like indie surprises and and maybe some smaller games and things like that this year but yeah i think i, I think my expectations is not to have to see much triple a this year yeah go on nick i keep seeing people in the chat talking about modern warfare 2 on game pass i don't know why people think that's gonna happen i'd be i mean yeah, no, I'd be very year. surprised no, if that year. happened. But again, like we were talking about earlier, though, like I don't would 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 Game Pass exclusion be in Sony's contract? It might not be. But from three years ago, they'll market the game, and then Microsoft can say we own this, and uh, it's that's what I mean. Like Pass. I'm like is, is we, like when we, so we all saw the the leaked Resident Evil Eight contract that did yeah. mention Game Pass. Yeah, but Game Pass was already a thing with first-party games, and they were pushing third-party games, and that was already a thing by the time Resident Evil Eight was in development. When this COD deal was signed, probably would have been twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, and Game Pass only started June twenty seventeen. Yeah, so there's a chance that there's a chance I based on timelines purely based on timelines there's a chance that there's nothing in that cod contract about not being allowed on game pass potentially i would know. be super interesting to see play out and and call out super chat from jason gears collection <laughs> is xbox's exclusive, exclusive tentpole title, tentpole of, the title year. of the year and it's um, worthy look Jason, so that's the fact that Jason, the fact that Jason is super chatting, that means he has landed in Melbourne and he's <laughs> turned his phone back on. He's just that means he has just landed and he's at, probably at the airport watching the show. Amazing. And I have to that's go. Dedication. I have to go. I have to go pick him up after this show finishes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jason. We're going for four hours. <laughs> like, the the one that would be close to AAA and it's not first party would be um, a Plague Tale Requiem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good shout. Good show. And, and the other fantastic. one that we don't know about is Deathloop. Like, is when is that exactly a year? Is it later? Hopefully, we find out. In yeah, September probably. Well, well, hopefully we'll find out on the show. Or do you reckon they it probably even... can't talk about it oh, until that God, year is so up? Sp- you know how Sony yeah. is. You can't pretend it exists at all. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. hilarious. Um, <laughs> it is a thing. Yeah. But there you go. Um, okay, so. Um, before we get into some more meaty news, big thank you for all of the likes there. We doubled the likes just from one mention of liking it, but there's still 128 of you that haven't liked it. I mean, come on now. Um, so big piece of news this week. And, you know, we've had conversations about, you know, Microsoft's uh, determined slant on producing a, a stick, a fire stick style device or a puck of, um, you know, purely Game Pass streaming plugs into the back of your TV. Yeah. Um, some reporting from Windows Central, uh, 
with the Xbox Project Keystone, which was the streaming device, has gone back to the drawing board. And we actually got a statement mm. from Microsoft here. Is that right? Yeah. They actually so. fed back um, and, and said, you know, oh, we're going in a different direction now. Um, so I did see one tweet from Tom Warren that says, yeah, whilst you might think that this is super delayed, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said, you know, expect to see something sooner rather than later. So what, what do we reckon here when they say they're going in a different direction? Do you think that they thought, no, we're going to go app-based and just... Apps. Mm. Well, I mean, it's it's one of those awkward situations where at the time that they were probably thinking of doing the stick or the little media device, smart TVs were less prevalent at that time. And they thought, well, let's get out this little device that's our xCloud device. So that way we can have it on like as many TVs as possible. But then they're like, oh, but then that means we're going to be force, forcing people to buy a little $100, $150 little device that they have to then plug in and take up a yeah. HDMI port. And as time has gone on, we're now in 2022. By the time whatever the plans for this are, we're probably talking closer to 2023. They're like, okay, everyone's got a smart TV now. Everyone has a smart TV with apps. Let's get the app on there. That way no one's paying anything. Mm -hmm. It's free and we'll get the app on just every Sony TV. Oh, I doubt Sony will allow it, but um, <laughs> Samsung TVs, LG TVs, TCL, Hisense, uh, Panasonic, all of them. Although then again, most Sony TVs have Google TV, so they can't really... Like Sony would have to go out of their way to individually block an Xbox app on Google TV on their TVs. I don't see that happening. I don't think the, they have that The kind main of reason for hardware would be um, controller connection. Yeah, like a, that's what I was going to say. actual proprietary good controller. Uh, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, that's, true. that's one of the advantages Google had. I mean, not too many advantages with that, but that was one of the things that worked out really well. Was, yeah, the Stadia Wi-Fi that you, controller. That you don't have that latency between the... Because you're adding another layer of latency uh, if you don't have have that but don't that most connection. new tvs have bluetooth these days uh or no? i don't i don't even i don't even think i've ever had the need to connect something via bluetooth to my tv i could be wrong yeah. i'm sure people might watch okay. tv with headphones i don't i game with headphones but that's obviously connecting to the yeah. console not the tv um yeah. i mean it's a it's a valid point right so i i it makes me more inclined to say that an app could be a thing but you know mm. does that mean you usb a pad I, mm. uh, or maybe yeah. they sell a pad with just a little USB receiver that works in it. I have no idea, but that's mm. uh, I think that makes maybe. hardware more likely than unlikely, right? Yeah, yeah that's I, true. Didn't think of that. I feel I feel like if you're going to go this middle route, because you're right, like the app does take it does give you an option, and they're probably using this as leverage to try to get on these TVs as soon as possible, uh, and they could do it through other you know services too. That's the other thing that maybe people don't think about but um you know if they're going to do this this halfway option maybe you just go a little bit further and make it a true like hybrid where you're processing some st some things locally you know not just the control not just what google does but maybe take that a step further just to just to give it an even more um you know local feel i don't know the other yeah, thing yeah. is uh, the other thing i think people don't underestimate maybe is that starfield uh might have been they may have that might be aligned with the launching of whatever they throw out there because Starfield is probably not only is that going to be a, 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 a big IP, it's going to be an exclusive IP to Xbox. It's also going to be, you know, next gen only. So it's probably going to require beefier PCs than a lot of people have and they can't get graphics cards. That is probably your best chance to start pushing people and a game like Bethesda Softworks RPGs aren't super latency sensitive, even if they're like mm. shooter ish, you know, you they give you don't need to be super precise and twitchy with those. So, uh, you know, I think that that is probably the the poster child for a if you're going to launch a, a officially launch their cloud gaming, that is probably the game you want to use to to leverage people to try it out with, you know, not only because it's going to work well, you know, um, but it's, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's real. I think it's the perfect storm app. Yeah. So if that, if mm. that, if that game's not ready, maybe they're just like, Hey, you know what? Uh, th what's the point of rushing it out this year? Cause you know, like let, let's, let's try to, you know, give ourselves more time and 
and and try to line it with a big game. Yeah, that's just yeah. my theory. I don't have any anything other than. It's, in, it's <laughs> gonna be I've interesting. Always said, to see. I've yeah. always said they should do a little device like that. I think we had spoken about it on an older episode. Sony has already had a device like this for years, which is the PlayStation TV. I've got yeah. one. It's just a little tiny little media player. It's basically a stripped down PlayStation Vita in the form mm. of a little media player thing and it supports remote play and it, Sony already had it years ago and I always said Microsoft should have a little device like this and it has apps like Netflix and like it becomes your it basically it should just be Microsoft's Google Chromecast mm. effectively yeah I, exactly I reckon something like that would be really good well, I'd probably get one we'll soon see to what, have one around what they the house. plan to announce right um but yeah, um, there's a super chat here from Creaky Legs who has reminded yes. us that we are terrible at remembering our own community questions until the very end. <laughs> yeah. well, literally, before we went live, we were like, hey, we'll keep an eye on the community questions. Yeah, Let's use I the know. ones that are relevant. And we always forget because we just get carried away. I have a related question to the Xbox COD stuff on Game Pass. Thought I'd throw it out there before it's two hours too late. Lol, love you guys. <laughs> He's right. He yeah. does have. It's right at the bottom. It's the last question on the community do you, do you want to just wait to the end now even though it's two hours we'll late? just wait to the end now. oh yeah this is just who we are now we'll just wait to the end now the pro- consummate just... professionals yeah um but it's interesting nick you were talking about um you know sony's already had this device sony have already done a lot of these things right because there's there's two pieces of news i saw this week um mm. that are indeed in our show notes right and one is generally sony's i think jim ryan's done some he hasn't talked about his cats this time or his no. disagreements with women's rights. Um, but he's talked mm. a little bit about their strategy of beyond console. Um, and there's a couple of bits of, of news that really made me sort of, I don't know, double take a little bit. So the first is, you know, when we look at it and we boil it down, it's like Sony is basically copying what Microsoft yeah. is already doing, but kind of hedging their bets at the same time. Um, and the other piece of amusing news I saw was that the series consoles apparently now play PlayStation One games better than the PS Five does. With well, yeah, generation. so they started launching a lot of the old PlayStation One games on PS Five, and Digital Foundry took a look at them. That other comparison YouTube channel, El Elanista Bits oh, or whatever they're called, they took a look, and apparently the PS One emulation and PS Two emulation's not great uh apparently Oof. uh where anyone who's running playstation 1 games and playstation 2 games on the series consoles will already know that they run quite well um yeah it's funny i mean look jim ryan's a man of his word i guess he said no one cares about old games turns out sony doesn't either um you know there was the little playstation 1 mini which apparently had not great games that didn't run the it's best. It's the PAL and 50 FPS versions. It's all the PAL versions of everything. Uh, you know, for people wondering if they're going to fix this, I, I don't know. Sony's track record with going back and following they up have on this tried. stuff. So have they like, patched three specific games to sort of try to interpolate data in between frames to get it to go up to 60 instead of the 50. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and it just leaves terrible artifacting and it looks way worse. <laughs> But the reason they use PAL is because there's way more language options. So it's, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Sony is very good about the global language options in their games. Yes. They They always always have been. been. Um, So that kind of makes sense from that perspective. I just think it's one of those things where I, I think as more and more of these fumbles come out from Sony with these old games, people will truly start to get an appreciation for what Microsoft managed to pull off. Yeah. Um. This, and this is only PlayStation 1 games. Like, it's not, we're not PlayStation 2. We're not, even, I mean, this PlayStation 2 as well, which apparently only run at 720, and those aren't being boosted in. It's like, who, what? 720? Like, serious? Like, I played Dead or Alive 3 the other day. I bought it. It was on sale. There was a fighter sale. So I went and got Dead or Alive. So That's I now OG have the Xbox, ent- isn't it? Yes. So I now have the entire Dead or Alive franchise. On Xbox, which is amazing. One through six. Nice. And I booted up. So so Dead or Alive 4 
is a 360 game. No FPS boost, no uh, res boost, nothing. It's just yeah. the raw 360 game. Dead or Alive 3 via OGBC looks better wow. than Dead or Alive 4. Like, Dead or Alive 3 looks incredible. I loved that game. On Series X. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. But, you know, people are now seeing this stuff's not easy. You don't just... But my thing with Sony is, right, like, they don't. They clearly don't really want to make the investment Microsoft did because it's a lot for, yeah. for stuff that not many people... I'll be brutally honest, not many people are going to use. It's a, it's a nice-to-have kind of thing. And, and we know that's kind of true because even Microsoft's kind of abandoned it now. So, so let's be real, not a lot of people do it. So my, Sony's not going to invest the money, but there's already a community out there that have done the work for you. Yeah. Like there's PlayStation 1 emulators out there that have been out there for years and years and years and years and years. There's a really good PlayStation 3 emulator out there on PC, RSC, P3, or whatever the hell it's called. We'll talk Mm -hmm. about it with MVG. Go and have a chat with that team. Go and pump some money in and say, okay, we're going to take over this project and we're going to make it official. We want you making the emulator for PlayStation 3 games on PS5. Let's do it. Uh, Go to the community that made a good PlayStation 1 emulator, good PlayStation 2 emulator, and put your money there and just... Like the the talent is out there, the the code is out there, the emulators are out there. Make use of it. Well, the thing like is, it's... you should arguably these guys are having to take a finished product and and kind of peel apart the onion to figure out how to emulate it. Arguably, mm. if you already have all of the real specifics about how everything works, all the timings, yeah, and, I know, and all it of that jazz, be easy. it's it should be easier. Certainly, it will give you a really good starting point, and it just blows my mind that. And I guess it's because we've got that direct comparison with Microsoft in that they really valued their history and their legacy. And that's the one thing I think out of all of this that really surprises me considering the type of devout fan that PlayStation Mm. uh, engenders and encourages, certainly from my interactions with that community online, is Mm. like... They should be really proud of the the legacy and history in mm. the gaming sphere they got. They have had You'd such a so. massive impact. They made gaming cool back then, mm. you know. Mm. And to not really want to celebrate it in any way and to only think about the next AAA banger is is really it's really odd to me. Like I, I find it just so jarring comparatively to what I personally feel gaming is all about. It's it's an odd mm. one, but and it's funny speaking just, about those AAA bangers. Jim Ryan also acknowledged that we, we've kind of narrowed ourselves a little bit, you know, into a bit of a niche and we probably need to expand out to more... Lots more games as a service Games titles. as a service. As a, like we've, been telling, we've been telling you all this for years. Like, like, like understand, how long have I been beating that drum? Sony is going to make more investments in games as a service because these are the games that make more money. These yep. are the games that have the engagement that these companies want to see. Like, yep. you know, I, I keep, you all sit there and say, God of War sold 20 million. Yeah, but then there's, for, for every God of War that sold 20, there's like five or six that maybe sold one or two million. Like, you, they're, they're Sony are not Nintendo. No matter how much you hope they will be or wish they were, Sony's not Nintendo where something like Animal Crossing can do 35 million dollars 35 million copies. That's just the reality of the situation. S- Sony knows. Deep, and this is why I said I've always said it and I'll stick to my guns. Jim Ryan has to do this carefully. He has to yeah. be very careful about how he does this. He has to do it slowly and he has to do it gradually. That's why they showed we're, now they start you saw them. They got aggressive. We're really going to go for PC now. We're really going to go for it now. They've just been tiptoeing in PC. Now they're going to go hard. We saw Returnal. Yeah. Uh, the Steam, it's funny. Uh, I've got to watch what I say here because if I say something specific, I'm going to dob in the person that told me and I'll reveal who they were. But I got that Returnal info about an hour before it got out on Twitter and I typed to the person. Like they sent me the link on Steam. Yeah. And they're like, this is Returnal. I'm like, oh, 
is it? I'm like, it's called Oregon. How do you know it's Returnal? So they sent me a screenshot and they're like, look at all these names. And there's all these stage names and all these, whatever. Mm-hmm. I haven't played Returnal, so I don't know. And I go, oh, can I put this out on Twitter? Can I leak it? They're like, Ugh, I don't know if it's going to trace back to me. And my gut was telling me, put this out on Twitter. Just take the gamble and put it out on Twitter. But I'm like, no. Nah. My, my golden rule is I don't burn my sources. If they tell me no, it's a no. then it's no. Anyway, an hour later, I see it on Twitter. <laughs> of course. So I linked, it, I linked it back to them. I'm like, it's out there. And they're like, oh, well. <laughs> Shrug. Oh, like, There's always man. someone looking at that Steam well, database. Ah, uh, well, there Nick, is, isn't there? Yeah. Well, Nick, to your to your point about the twenty million, like people always like, well, it made money. It's good enough. They obviously have no understanding of how publicly traded corporations work. It's yeah, never about you just hey, we made money. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. It's always about making more, more money. Because mm. as a publicly traded corporation, if you flat you flatten out, people aren't going to want to invest in you, right? So, so that is where do they make more money? And, and you got J- Jim That's Ryan right. saying months ago um, with PC. God of War, we want a hundred million people playing this. Well, how are That's you right. going to get a hundred million people to play it? You can't you can't go five x the uh, number of PlayStation users, right? That's not realistic. So, uh, you know, start you to do these. Hold market. on, PlayStation Four. PlayStation Four sold 115 million, 116 million consoles, and God of War 2018 is done at 100 million. Right. Like, right. You, you're not going to get that again. Nintendo is the company that can get that sort of wild penetration. Like, it's and, and the only time Microsoft ever did was with the OG Xbox. Like, the OG Xbox sold 24, 25 million, and the original Halo sold eight. Well, it's because like Halo was it's, it's like a third. As somebody that was in on the OG Xbox from day one, there's a reason why I played Halo over and over. That's and right. Over yeah. again, right? Like that happens, and that's why you know Nintendo's where they are with their first parties because for a long time they didn't get third party support. So when you yeah, don't yeah. have that, it, then then like, it, it people at, have to go that look way. Look at Mario Kart. Like the Nintendo Switch has sold 107 or 108 million consoles. Mario Kart's at nearly 50 million. That's insane. That's isn't like it? 45% penetration or so. It's like that is ridiculous. Unheard of. Like that is to have that kind of penetration on a console that has sold over 100 million is insane for a first party game. That is like that's unbelievable. But this is what I mean. And, and I've always said, Jim Ryan knows that the Microsoft way is the way they need to go. So now that, you know, M- Microsoft went on PC because their games apparently weren't selling. So does that mean that Sony's games aren't actually selling and that's why they're going on PC now? Mm. I, I, I think, you know, like... like I, I or is that narrative going to... Sh- are those goalposts going to shift now? <laughs> are they going to shift now? Is that all, uh, is that all okay? Uh, is that, think- so, so it's all good now? Old games are the best... Um, PC's the best. Uh, games as a service are amazing now. It's oh man, you games as a service. PlayStation Plus, the the premium tiers, letting you play all their old games is killing Game Pass because Game Pass doesn't have new game. Wait. Okay. Yeah, 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 mate. Now, now and and you know what? And PlayStation Plus has demos. They've got trials. Oh my god, trials are the best. I love limited time trials. They just I love paying for limited time trials. Limited time trials are amazing. They're just so cool. For the cool. record, I was unsure why the episode was called Shifting the GoPo Goalposts and now I That's know why. why. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Did you rehearse this? This is a good one. Oh my um, god. Like seriously. And you know what? The same thing's going to happen. So right now, let's let's remember this. The conversation has been that Sony will never put their games day and date on PlayStation Plus because that would devalue their games and that would decrease the quality of their games. And as I think, who was it? Was it Jim Ryan that spoke about the virtue of their games? Protecting the virtue of their games? Nah, man. They're going to go day and date too. And when that happens can't wait to see the goalpost shifting again then i think guys they're gonna do it jim ryan knows that that's what he needs to do he just 100 million he needs he needs 100 to million god of war you need he you need more than just pc slowly. you need yeah. a, you need yeah. a subscription too right something yeah. else and it's gonna, it's gonna be an interesting is, <laughs> like i said i'm still gonna call them disney plus because have a look right now 
you, most of you who watch this show, follow me on Twitter, you know my spending habits. I waste a lot of money because I'm an idiot. Right now, I don't buy. The only PlayStation, <laughs> oh, the, the only PlayStation 5 game I bought was Ratchet and Clank. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and I just bought My Name is Mayo because <laughs> I wanted the easy platinum trophy. It's like a $3 yeah. game. And the entire game is just you. I posted a video on Twitter because my wrist was really hurting. And all you do is just spam a button to tap a glass of uh, a mayo jar. <laughs> That's all you do all in this game. game. <laughs> it is the best game. Um, but like all I've bought is Ratchet and Clank. But if Sony announces tomorrow that they're putting all their games day one on PlayStation Plus, I'll subscribe straight away. Even though there's, there's not a game right now, I will subscribe straight away just to have it there set and forget for mm-hmm. when... God of War comes out and then the thing after comes out and then the thing after comes out. And that is money that Sony will be getting off me every month for however long that they wouldn't have got otherwise. Like it- uh, There's a super chat from Jason who says, I can't tell, is Nick <laughs> is being Nick facetious? Being facetious? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I, I'm hang- I, I don't care what anyone says. I, think it, it's, I still think it's going to happen. They are going to put their games day and date in PlayStation Plus. I re- and I reckon it could even be sooner than you think. I'm pretty sure I I've mentioned this you think. on this show before, but Nick, if you enjoy those kind of just pressing the thingy button mm. games, I don't know you're doing mm. that particular one for a trophy, but if you want an actual funny, well-written, you can't help but go back to it and see how far you've got, everyone should go. And I, th- I don't think it's a lot of money. It's a couple of quid. If you, I presume it's on iPhone. I'm on Android. But go and download Space Plan. Go find it Space on your plan. on your store, Space Plan. I'm not going to tell you anything apart from that there's a lot of potato jokes in it. But trust me, okay. it's brilliant. Um, brilliant piece of game design that is literally just all about this, doing this. But absolutely uh, okay. superbly done. Trust me. Uh, well, Go and check my, it out. Na- oh, there's a PC version. Amazing. <laughs> my, my, name is, my name is Mayo. Is There's three of them. So there's a trilogy. So I, I've bought all three. Because the game's like... It's either a dollar fifty or two bucks Australian, three dollars Australian, something like that. And I got the first two, and really, you're just buying it to get the easy free platinum. That's the only reason you would buy this game. Uh, and I think the first one had a Vita version, which had a it cross buy, and it was a separate platinum. So I got two platinums out of it. Um, but then when I saw the third one was out, I'm like, I gotta complete the trilogy. So I just bought My Name Is Mayo three. And I've been working my way through that game because this one's a little bit longer than the others and a bit more involved, which is annoying, but I'm making my way through anyway. Um, but yeah, like it's, you know, we, we kept saying to everyone, they will follow Microsoft's blueprint. Because that, that, this is why Microsoft stays quiet because, you know, everyone was like, well, they're not reporting on console sales because they're not selling. They're not reporting on games because they're not selling. They're not. That's not why, like... You're discovering why Microsoft stopped, stopped reporting numbers because the problem is you, you've got to go you've got to go all in or all out. You either report all the numbers or report some of the numbers. When you go half half, that's when it starts to look dodgy. So Sony was happy to report sales of all these games, but then we didn't hear about Gran Turismo Seven and Horizon Forbidden West. So what message does that send? I saw a the thread message... on Reset today yeah. that said, did Horizon Forbidden West just come out and everyone forgot? Yeah, they <laughs> did. They did. We said that. They did forget about it. Um, now, the reasons for that are going to vary from person to person. But yeah, they very much did forget about it. Um, and that's the thing. Sony didn't report the numbers on Forbidden West or Gran Turismo 7. So the message that sends... True or not, the message that sends is, well, these games didn't do well enough for us to bother reporting on them. That's the message that alter, And that's why Microsoft's just like, nah, we're not reporting any numbers. The only numbers we're going to report on are like how many players, like all engagement metrics. Because yeah, engagement can... metrics... Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody ever done the math MAUs, on those numbers? Man. <laughs> MAUs. Yeah. Has, has anybody ever sat down and tried to do the numbers like with this many zombie kills and the average person? Yeah, so many, yeah. and that's that's <laughs> what they do. Like that's what they do now. Yeah. So, um, it, and so again, I'm sure Sony will head there too. Like it's, it, yeah, it, that's why they do it. It's it's not about oh well they're hiding numbers. That could be true, but 
there's also this element to it because if they pick and choose what they want to report on then it sends the message that we're only going to report on stuff that is doing well and if we're not reporting on something it means it's not doing well mm-hmm. and that's not the message you want to send no. so you know it is what it is Times are changing, everybody. Like I've said, this generation is going to be the most interesting one so far. Um, it's good, because though, of all but of this these... is yeah, good. It's, it's yeah. like, we, that's, that's this is what we want. We want Sony yeah. putting their games on PC. There's nothing wrong with that. I accidentally may have leaked on an ep- on the episode with Diana that Sony's got a... What are, I remember I said it and you were like, uh, I don't think you have, you were supposed to say that. When <laughs> I, I went back and watched that and you were like, uh, I don't think you have said that before and I don't think you were meant to. I kind of just let it slip that Sony's doing a PC launcher and I think the plan of that launcher is to have like cross-buy and all that sort of stuff. So if you buy a PlayStation 5 game, you, I guess you would get the PC game too, just mm. like how Microsoft has Play Anywhere. We yeah. should want this. This is what we yeah, should this is want. Good like, stuff. This is the stuff that's going to encourage more people to jump into the PlayStation ecosystem, not less. And yeah. if they can sort out cross-save as well, that's going to... Like, if Sony can manage to get cross-save and cross-buy with their PC launcher, man, that's going to encourage so many more people to buy games on their ecosystem. Yeah. Like, you know, s- small, small rant, Nick, because you, you bring up a really good point because we keep hearing... You keep hearing <laughs> narratives. I should I should just avoid narratives and, and you know, they're, they're meaningless anyways. But, you know, the whole point is, that, hey, we don't want them all doing the same thing. Uh, you know, we want we want we want them to not do subscriptions, not do PC day and date because we don't want them doing exactly the same. First of all. So what you're saying is you don't want them to compete like like why? Because <laughs> anytime, yeah. anytime they start to do similar type of things, that's going to force them to try to find more differentiators right which mm, causes mm. more innovation like I, I i think about like i got rid of all my apple products i know you're an apple guy nick but i, I don't get I it. Am. but um very it, much so <laughs> but i got rid of all my apple stuff by subscriptions all that stuff uh you know the last few years i just got tired of getting sucked into the the ecosystem and then you know i'm, I'm riding a plane home and i and i watched they had uh, a couple episodes. Uh, somebody mentioned Severance. So I put that on. I watched two episodes of that. It's supposed to be good. I, yeah, I came home. I subscribed to Apple TV Plus. <laughs> and, and, and in the last, in, 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 over the course of a few weeks, I'll have watched, you know, Severance on that. I'll have watched, you know, Obi Wan on the Disney Channel. Uh, Stranger Things started that with my daughter uh, yesterday for season four. And then you get the boys coming, uh, what is it, in a week on Amazon and that crappy app. Oh, it doesn't sweet. matter. Like, it, it, and like and what people I think that's what they're not seeing like like you should want that I get it at the end of the day will Sony be okay will they continue to make money if they don't do what Microsoft is doing probably they could probably be fine I don't know if their investors would be happy if they stagnate but they might still be able to just keep doing what they're doing but we should want them to compete because it's good. It's good for us. If I, I'm not a you know Apple fan. I'm not a. I hate Amazon's app, but I've got all that stuff going, and I'm. And mm. I'd say that over the course of a few weeks, that's the highest quality TV I probably maybe ever have watched all within a short period of time. And I think you can get to that same point with gaming, and they're really like they are competing. But you know, as you kind of move away from just being on consoles, they're more people will just go and say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to subscribe to that. And I'm just going to, yeah. you know, uh, a new game, a new IP came out from Sony and an Xbox guy is going to go, you know what? I'll just subscribe and try that out. And ditto, right? Other way around. People who've never been on Xbox will pick it up, you know, pick up Game Pass yeah. and try it out for Starfield streaming. And that's the future. And I think, you know, people like fighting against it because they're afraid that maybe in this narrative war that, their company won't do as well and it's like like just it's it's just what's good for us right and I, and i don't see any downside for us at the end of the day yeah but like that's that's what happens with market disruption though so yeah <clears throat> when someone comes along and disrupts it's not about i don't want them all doing the same thing but when that same thing is good for you and good for your bottom line and good for your pocket and good why wouldn't you right so right now you have to buy a game twice with Sony. You have to buy God of War on PlayStation and then you have to buy it on PC. So you're buying twice. 
are you telling me you don't want Sony copying Microsoft where you only pay once? You <laughs> want to give Sony your money twice for the same game? Like, do you understand how that's not that's nonsense? Like, yeah. When 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 copying is fine when the copying is something good. Nintendo did these awesome motion controls. So guess what? Sony went and did it. Then Microsoft did Connect. Microsoft went and tried to go one step further. And that's what, just like Abe said, that's what the competition does. So yeah. my, Microsoft had achievements and they were hugely successful. What did that Sorry. get Sony to do? Trophies, which I would argue are better. Um, yes. And they've got the cool platinum where the, it acknowledges that you've completed the base game and then separate trophies for DLC. So Sony were forced to to copy but then improve upon that's how this stuff works so mm -hmm. that's what we want we want sony to copy because play anywhere is a fantastic thing and the fact that you can then play your games via streaming and the fact that you can then do all these other things these are all great things we should want sony and nintendo to copy them that like we should want that because they're good for you like it's mm -hmm. it's not uh yeah yeah. It's not always about it's, who wins. Well, we see what happens Unless with Nintendo us. when they don't. We see what happens with Nintendo when they don't. When when you have somebody that does <clears> something <throat> that's so their own thing and they don't have to compete, you basically mm. have freaking dial up uh, online services and uh, cardboard boxes for eighty bucks and Nikki set shit up. <laughs> well, guys, look, I you know as great as conversations is, I think we need to bear in mind, and okay. you guys probably forgot, but. Not everything is great in Game Pass land. Not everything is great in subscription land. As we've oh, seen yeah. evidence this oh, we week <laughs> by some stellar reporting from a certain publication that because two people with a verified really. check mark on Twitter... It was, it was Gene, really, that started yeah, that. But because of that, and they said, I'm on subbing from Game Pass because, yeah, it's looking pretty pretty barren for, for the mm. next six months... Game Pass, the bubble has burst, guys. It's over. Pack it yeah. up, Microsoft. Go home. <laughs> yeah. What on earth? I mean, oh, I look. mean, I mean. Do we I get an answer went, this? Can, please. Please. <laughs> well, look, I've seen, I've seen. Jeans copped a lot of crap for this, which is yeah. Yeah. again, Gene, which is unwarranted. Just don't, don't just attack people. Like Gene at the time, he, he's the problem with Twitter. Like I've done it many, many times. Right? Like where I'll wake up. And I'm half asleep. It's like seven in the morning. I see something on Twitter and like an idiot, I don't think. And I reply or I tweet something. You're not think like, you know, and I, I put out a tweet that was like, look, just wanted to announce that I'm staying subscribed to Game Pass. You know, there's like 400 games on there. Pretty sure I'll find <laughs> something I like on there out of 400 games. A couple of PlayStation fanboys were replying like, who cares? And then I replied to them saying, exactly who cares? Who cares? Same way no one cares if you're unsubbing from Game Pass. That's the whole point. Nobody cares. So that's why I'm like, and I'm not saying, Gene can post on Twitter whatever the hell he likes. Uh, my Gene main Park, issue is not with anyone that says I'm unsubbing, like to right, be clear. Same. In, in the end, no one really cares if you're unsubbing or not. Exactly. But what, what happens is at some point, you have to certain people have to understand we've spoken about this certain people have volume on social media some will be louder than others gene has now learned his volume and that is loud so when gene says something it it has effects same way most people that have that volume know that volume i've said this before i'm aware of my volume now um, and the, the real lesson of that was when I stupidly said, Microsoft's not going to buy Activision. <laughs> and I ended up on that meme website with, there's some meme website that that tweet is forever burned onto now. Um, shopping list that came true. <laughs> yeah. The, you need to understand your volume. Gino knows that. And then a whole bunch of other, a couple of other check marks were like, yeah, I'm on something too. La, 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 la. It's like, what did Gene think was going to happen when he said that? Like, because Gene is verified and he has a lot of followers and he has a lot of respect as well. And, you know, and then good old, <laughs> good old former Bloomberg jumped in and was like, yeah, Game Pass sucks and Xbox sucks. <laughs> is, that that, like, is that the guy that is definitely should not be 
Oh god, he's yeah. not at Bloomberg anymore. Yeah, I can um, understand why. Mr. PlayStation's gonna dominate. Oh man, PlayStation's the greatest. You can't touch PlayStation. Wow, they're the best. How was that guy on Bloomberg? How? No idea. No idea. I just. Oh my god! But apparently, we're bad for being on Metacritic. Well, that was Mr. Anyway. Um, Spider-Man Miles Morales is only possible on PlayStation Five. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, and I mean, how, I mean, how's, speaking of which, how's Returnal going to work on PC? It doesn't yeah, have the PlayStation oh. 5's SSD. How, how's that going to work? How, how are all these PlayStation Five games going to work on PC? Are they when just marketing like meets reality, like um, at some stage we have to just learn that like it's all bullshit, all of it. Like it's all just. It's all marketing speak from all of them. Not this isn't just the Sony thing. All of them, Microsoft, they're, they're, everyone, they all of it. Just use your brain, figure it out for yourself, and just don't let these companies just market to you the way they do. I have to admit, like, I did love the Game Pass Twitter account, which I think was Steen Stein. I think he actually. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he, know he directly it. posted this tweet, <clears> but <throat> tell me you limit yourself to only AAA games without yeah. telling me you limit yourself only to AAA games. Yeah. Because the the fact that that headline even came out based on two people, and I think mm, the other one was yeah. Tony Polanco. Is it that guy? Tony Polanco. Yeah. Like. Yeah. What? Like that? Like I don't understand how. Like if Ed, if we saw. One person post on Twitter with with oh something clever. I wouldn't be like right. That's it. This is a headline. <laughs> yeah. Gonna like, write an article <sighs> because someone's unsubbing from Game Pass. It's, it's like bonkers. what do they call it? burnout or something? Yeah, yeah. It, the it, burnout uh, is here. The I mean, that's the real. Uh, <laughs> that's the real story. I mean, I, I, honestly, I as somebody who who does read a lot of what Gene puts out there, I think he's always been fair and honest and whatever. Like you know, if if he doesn't, if if, if he's into AAA and that's not there, and he wants on sub and he wants to talk about it, you know, he, obviously you know when you. I think he has to know by now because he's tweeted other things that he's had PlayStation guys come at him. So I think he yeah because he called of, them ponies. <laughs> yeah, I mean he kind of he, he wants... kind of gets it. I I think he gets it. I think Kotaku. <laughs> is really the ones it's like but they've been doing this for a while now they they basically have mm. taken themselves to tabloid level so i, I, I don't know if didn't they get a new it. editor that really wanted to change the game and then the new editor quit like six months later or something i, I don't know i don't know yeah. i don't know I mean, it's, but it's a ridiculous gene, headline gene i mean i follow gene on twitter gene he usually posts good stuff and it's just yeah. his honest yeah. opinion on things but and he's allowed to have that opinion i totally yeah, understand of course. i've got friends that have come to me i think we spoke about it two weeks ago friends have been like eh, there's nothing that's come out on game pass recently and i'm like are you sure like i've, I've tunic's really good and this is really good and mm, mm. oh no i mean like you know really big games and that's an absolutely fair comment right now we are in mm, mm. the driest microsoft of spells it. and microsoft knows yeah. it as well you know yeah. so either way very very it's, entertaining bit of yeah, games. It's, it's just a matter of, oh, and there was so much activity on Twitter over that stuff. Like, in, in the end, the bottom line is really, like, no one cares if you're subscribing or unsubscribing. Like, ultimately not, because that's the responses I kept getting to my tweet. Yeah. Oh, who cares? So, and? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that is my point. Who cares? Like, you unsubbing from a service isn't something that requires an announcement. Yeah. Like you do what you want with your money. That's okay. You don't have to give Microsoft your money every month. That's fine. Just like I'm, you know, I give my money to Sony and Nintendo once a year because I have, to, I want to play online. So I have to give them my money, but I'm not going to give them that extra layer of money because I can play PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation 2 games on my PS3. So I don't and need PC. it for that. Or an Xbox, I, for that matter. I, I, play, I play my PS3 games on my PS3. And so far from the list I've seen of the PlayStation 4 games coming to that plus tier, they were already on PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Or part of the PlayStation 4 on PlayStation 5 Plus collection. So th there's nothing there for me to want to spend that money but if they go day and day i'm there i'll be a subscriber for life just like i am with game pass and if nintendo did it nintendo will never do it but if nintendo did it i'd go with them as well but nintendo will never 
ever, ever do what Game Pass is doing. The whole day in hell. Oh, and and it's not even it's not even about oh you know the quality of the games will suffer. They won't. But like with Nintendo, you know, all their games sell a ton. Right. Like all of them, and they already get like. I don't even know how to explain myself properly with Nintendo. Nintendo just always do everything differently. The, Nintendo the traditional is model just... is like a subscription with Nintendo. <laughs> they they can rely That's, on yeah. everybody. They can rely on, on 50 million. Like, hey, we're going to put this game out. We know it's going to hit 30 million. It's going to hit whatever. You know, they, yeah. that, and, that's and the thing with them. The, and, and like I've said before, the other reason Nintendo won't bother, like a part, I'm not saying it's the whole reason, a part of the reason game pass exists is because as we've said before less risk right because when microsoft and nintendo make games <laughs> ag and Zagan, i was about to mention metroid too um when microsoft and sony make games they're expensive to make nintendo's aren't as expensive to make so metroid dread unfortunately even though it's the best-selling metroid game still i don't feel is sales befitting the 2021 game of the year i don't think um metro dread is an incredible game but the thing is metro dread at 3 million copies or 4 million copies whatever it was still would have made a ton of money because metro dread probably didn't cost a lot to make and that's the thing with nintendo that's why their their need to have something like game pass is basically non-existent because even their lower selling games would still make a lot of money because they wouldn't have cost much to make so where sony's so you know what you think god of war would have been a cheap game to make like mm. no like way god, god of war would be like those games are massive productions, huge, 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 expensive productions. Even 10 million probably wouldn't make a lot of their money back. Like wouldn't make them a ton of money, even 10 million copies, purely because of how bloody expensive those games are to make. And then they've got to market them too. Part of that cost is marketing and all these sorts of things. Um, and obviously paying the people that made the game. It's, it's, it's like... It, it's all very, very expensive on the AAA side with Microsoft and Sony. That's why something like Game Pass is good once they build it up to where it needs to be. Nintendo never needs to do it. As long no. as Nintendo keeps doing what they're doing, they will never need to emulate that. Exactly. Be exactly. Because their um, games are cheap to make. Quick update. Uh, I know I know. previously we were tagged uh, with the... Uh, uh, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the FCC <laughs> is now involved on Twitter um, <laughs> to put a stop to our maniacal plans. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> sorry, just sorry, it made me laugh. Now, look, um, we're kind of at the, the end of the news, but yes, we do have a super chat far away. Dead Planet. Uh, I hold Xbox partly responsible for Sony's continued arrogance with charging for games. The lack of competition has made PlayStation's exclusives look unrivaled. I think that's I think that's a There's fair some truth comment. To that. There is There's there some is some nuggets that. of truth. You well, know, the, like... the higher the quality of Microsoft's, the you know, the the more it's going to put the onus on them to differentiate in other ways, right? Yeah, so, and we yeah. saw with that leaked. I think they had like an internal review of Last of Us Two that it was never yeah. meant to see the light of day, but they talked yeah. about how there was a level of polish and shine. Yeah, to that yeah. game. That yeah, like they they're setting a bar here. You yeah, know? so it, and it is competition. Microsoft's Last of Us 2 is a wet. highly polished product. It's just a boring video game. That's all. <laughs> it's just... Oh, I'm serious. Like, I've said this on Twitter. So this isn't like... I'm just finding this game incredibly boring. I'm struggling to go back to it. I, ha I haven't touched it in months. It's just... It's such a slog. It's such a... It's not fun. It's just not fun. There, there is an like... element of these very serious uh, video games that are games and i have different ideas about video games or art like uh, you know inside video games or art artful escape video games or art but these kind of like well it's hilarious that hbo have picked up but these very oh i'm gonna deal with a very serious subject matter because i'm a mature video game for grown-ups 
there is mm. an element of like i also want to have fun when i'm playing a video game yeah like that's and oh the brutality oh it's so graphic like after a while i'm like okay I like I, I don't care the story isn't that engaging because unfortunately it's yeah. still a video game folks and I I just go back to know. this <laughs> well I think fun. I think they it's they fun. all have like a place it's... right like I think it's just having that diversity you know there there is times you just want to watch Sony something has acknowledged yeah I mean you just want to see you want to have you're in a mood for just like music right there's times there's times I'm not li- listening for the best of lyrics, <laughs> you know, yeah. sometimes you just want to be, sometimes you just want to get angry when you're working out. Uh, I think mm. gaming is the same way. It's uh, you're always looking for different things. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, though, I think, you know, going back to that one topic, the only thing, one last thing I would, would say, let's just gr- agree with Kotaku. You know, Microsoft isn't doing enough. They got to buy somebody else after Activision Blizzard, <laughs> Sega win. Yeah, they should. <laughs> Sega win. Very and they should go point. for someone they they should like what everyone's been complaining about they should go for someone japanese i mean i've yeah. always said sega or capcom they might sega and capcom are my number one and my number two i will i will stick to those guns indeed but indeed well look yeah. i mean that's about all that happened in video game land this week in a nutshell no um, there was one more oh was there what, what, what in the what show notes you missed it so apparently apparently right i'll go with this one because I, I, I just read it and I don't know about it. Apparently, so, the yeah. premier, the premier TV brand in the world, TCL, have <laughs> oh, somehow right. got a hold of Sony and Microsoft's future console plans, because Sony and Microsoft have always been in the business of revealing their future console <laughs> plans to <laughs> mid-tier TV brands. Um, and there was some slide. TCL was doing some presentation. I assume it was one it's of up on the screen. things or something like that. And, you know, they had the timeline. And mind you, like, they don't even put Nintendo in there. Like, it's just <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation. Oh, they didn't even put Nintendo in there. And, like, they've got so in 20-whatever. I'm not seeing the screen like everyone else is right now because I don't watch the show at the same time as while we're streaming because it'll probably ruin what I'm trying to do. Uh, this year, there was Xbox One and PS4. And then there was Generation 8.5, which is this. And then they've put at the end, like, Generation 9.5 and put PS5 Pro and the next Xbox for 2023, 2024. I'm like... And, every, and there are people writing stories on this and, like, taking it seriously. It's like, <laughs> you people can't be for real. Like, you just can't be. Like When I was looking for this image... There was like 30 websites that took it completely seriously. Yeah. I didn't realize this is just yep. marketing because 8K is not selling. No one 8, wants it. Yeah, 8K is not it. a thing. Like this yeah. is TCL trying to sell 8K people. Like, because they think that, well, because, you know, we already have a couple of 8K games now, like the Tourist. So um, <laughs> the next consoles are definitely going to be 8K. 8K is, I don't know if 8K will ever be a thing. Really. No. I mean, it, it might it, many, many years down the track, but like, we're it, so it, far from 8K. If 8K like, ends up becoming a thing before better physics, better AI, even ray tracing, if you want to get into like the shiny things. Yeah. Like, like that would be the absolute worst waste of resources oh, <laughs> from game let, development. Yeah, we're so far let's away get, from that. Let's get 4K 60 and 4K 120 as the norm before we start worrying yeah. about 8K. Like TCL yep. were just trying to sell their TVs and they were trying to drive, because, you know, video games are hot right now. They're so hot right now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Mugatu in Zoolander, <laughs> that Hansel is so hot right now. <laughs> so they're using the popularity of video games to try it. And they're extrapolating the timeline to try and sell their TVs. There's not going to be a PS5 Pro next year. Yeah, like no chance. We're, we're, we're <laughs> no only just chance. hearing about Sony getting a slightly smaller chip or something to try and like Jeff Grubb, I think, was saying that they're, they're adjusting how they're producing the PS5 to get the cost down. Blah, blah. They can't even produce enough regular PS5s. You think they're going to worry about a Pro right now? Like they can't even get PS5s out the door. Like. Don't, don't worry about pros. We, we may not even get... I, I already said, we've said this before. I don't even know if we'll get mid-gen refreshes. I think we might around. get slim, but I even then... Slim, like, slim, yes. Sl- yeah. A slim we'll probably get. 
but I don't think we're going to get mid-gen refreshes. These consoles are very, very powerful. And we like Microsoft is got cloud streaming to keep the Xbox one people there. Sony's going to keep making and, you know, making PS4s for a while longer and releasing 2025 PS4 games till 2025. I don't know if they're manufacturing them till 2025, but they said there's going to be games until 2025. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we'll get, because by 2025, the generation will already be five years old. Like, I, I don't know if we're even going to get mid gen refreshes this time around. I well, think I the reason. To... Oh, I was going to say, I, gonna... I, I think oh, the reason we got mid gen refreshes last generation was because last generation, those consoles were underpowered the day they came out. Yeah. I so we needed. CPU yeah, we needed consistent. the mid gen refresh just to let them crawl to the line. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Nick, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry. I, I think I, I no, think okay. you're sometimes I think you're you're about to stop, but then you're really just taking a breath <laughs> so you can go for another five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get better, I gotta get better at re I gotta get better at reading that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. but uh no what, what I was gonna say is if you remember too when they did the mid gen refreshes last generation, at least Sony came out and said this, that part of the reason why they did that was to to offset some of the base that they were losing to the PC side. And now with all this crypt, like the, the chip shortages have affected the PC market as well. And like those GPUs are extremely expensive today. And because of these crypto, whatever, you know, the, these guys that are, they're, you know, that, that are basically buying up all these GPUs, it looks like that's not going to, that shortage or that demand is not going to lower in any time in the short term. So I don't think Microsoft and Sony really need to, try to offset the uh, the PC crowd as much. And then the other thing Microsoft also has on their side is, you know, they got the cloud thing too, right? So mm. yeah. I, yeah, I just, I, it doesn't, it, it, it probably makes a lot less sense this generation all, all around. So mm. I think that's mm. they'll just do a hard cut off. But yeah, yeah. sorry. Sorry about uh, cutting you off there, Nick. No, it's yeah. okay. I, just, <laughs> I, I, could, I could be wrong. I'm just saying I don't think they'll have yeah. mid-gen refreshes this time I around because so. I don't know if it's as necessary. No, as it was I, I don't think it is last generation no i completely like, agree there's no, there's no yeah. point and even if i don't i again if they did have a mid-gen refresh it was even more powerful then you're asking developers to cater to even more differences yeah uh, you've got a great starting block <clears throat> let's just go for a nice normal generation mm. like slim yep. consoles with the same power fine but let's let's not worry too much and and, and just for the record even if they did have plans for a PS5 Pro and an Xbox Series X, X, whatever the the <laughs> whatever they would call the mid-gen refresh of a Series X, Triple it would probably be an X. I don't know what it would be. Um, X2. Yeah, X2. X I, I don't squared. Know. Um, they're probably not going to clue in TCL on those plans. Right. <laughs> what? Like. <laughs> Like, like I could see them maybe cluing Samsung and LG, who are the two <laughs> top premier TV manufacturers. Maybe. That's a huge maybe. TCL? Probably not. Do you, like, know, what, just... do you know what I think that slide is? Is that is someone looking at the old format wars like DVD and VHS and the upgrades and the differences and what it brought to TV technology and all of that and going... Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what they did last time, so let's just ignore the realities of the yeah. market and just assume, and that's just someone's typed up, some intern's gone, yeah, this will look cool on a presentation, this will help explain why we're doing X, Y, and Z, and video game websites have just run with it as gospel. I can't which believe is they've written stories about it. I can't believe they've written stories about that. Absolutely. That, and they're like, yeah, there's a PS4 Pro coming next year. I'm like, no, there isn't. Let's get an it's Xbox not. handheld first, all right, and then we'll go from there. Yes, yeah, um, we need we need to get that. That's but hey, it's it's good. That's that is now officially all the news of the week, and I don't think we're missing any yep. super chats. So no. I'll take this point in the show to just thank the two hundred and sixty odd people watching us live right now. We love all of you, um, and. A big thank you to our patrons um, because without them, none of this exciting, wonderful stuff like Xbox era being on Metacritic is possible. You know, they they mm. fund and support everything that we've built and everything yeah. that we've done for the community. Um, so much love to all of our wonderful patrons it's, whose it's names because of all our patrons that we now get to boost Microsoft's Metacritic <laughs> scores for all their games and make sure that they get over nineties. 
so we we'll can be, rub it in the face of all the PlayStation fans uh, out there. We'll be launching sure. PlayStation era <laughs> next week. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna personally start reviewing PlayStation games. I'm gonna oh, give them two out of ten so that I drag their Metacritic score down. There is at the least twenty replies to that tweet. You've that already been clipped, really uh, Nick. By the way, that's uh, going to be all over every podcast. <laughs> uh, that's that going to be selectively edited. Think. It's going to be very carefully edited. And, uh... John, John all those Tomo, spaces on tweet, Monday. All the spaces on Monday. That tweet is Monday, nothing but people saying zero out of ten for PlayStation games from us. I think that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. because I'm, so, I'm sure all the Sony first-party studios will be very eager to send Xbox era codes for their games. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, guys. We're totally cool. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so big thank you to our patrons. If you're watching for the first time or the 111st time, <laughs> and you don't support us yet on Patreon, please do consider doing so. It can cost as little as uh, a cup of coffee or even less than that, depending upon where you live. Um, and you can get ad-free forum browsing and stuff like that. Or you can indulge and get some really cool t-shirt and merch and speaking of merch if you head over to our store which is on xboxzero.com we did launch some some new merch uh this week one with our uh drop pod logo which is one of the new halo focused shows um from forebear really cool design from pre-drag it was totes my idea though i inspired his idea on the back of a napkin um <laughs> but he also made a really great one to celebrate all of jesse and the review crew's hard work and there's a very very cool review crew t-shirt so if you love our review stuff the review crew t-shirt is there and it is really really awesome the uh lady justice sitting there with the balance it's, it's really really great design from pre-drag um oh you so know yeah what we forgot to talk about there was what one more f- bit of news and we forgot to talk about it well that what? sony announced their state of play oh yeah that is Remember true. How that last week yesterday. last week i said i think last week i said that i had been told that yeah there's an early june state of play and there it is there's the, and that's not me claiming that because i think jeff grubb said it first and a couple of others mentioned it first a, a certain playstation youtuber i think there was a certain playstation youtuber <laughs> do i name them i'm trying to think of the outcome of me naming them because they did had enough me. youtube this, drama this this playstation <laughs> youtuber no it's not that i don't want to name them in a bad way like because this playstation youtuber this well-known PlayStation YouTuber DMs me every now and again and asks me certain things and tries to verify stuff with me. And they asked me, they said, look, I had heard that there was an early June PlayStation because I think they went with it on their video. And they asked me, they said, oh, is, have you heard anything about a June show? And I said to them, I said, yes, I have. I said, I have been told by my Sony source that there is an early June PlayStation show. Um, and... There it is. So we forgot to talk about that. We forgot to talk about Sony announcing a state of play for early June, That's which true. is going to focus on PSVR 2 and, and third, third party. party reveals. So Jeff Grubb said that he thinks Street Fighter. I said that I think Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, and a lot of people are like, Resident Evil Remake? That's huge. That's not going to be in a state of play. I'm pretty sure Resident Evil 3 Remake was announced at a state of play. So... I'm just saying, uh, I, again, I don't know that it's going to... Resident Evil 4 Remake, it's got to be announced at some stage. We all know it's a thing. I tweet, and you know what? I am going to toot my goddamn horn here. I was the first person to mention Resident Evil 4 Remake in, like, March of 2020. So That's true. The tweet, the tweet is out there. Andy and I have talked about it because VGC were the first to put an article out about it. But my, we've compared notes, and my tweet is before their article. So I mentioned Resident Evil 4 Remake first. Ha, ha, ha. Now, <laughs> that's due to be announced, like, any time now. So my assumption one. is... my my. <laughs> no, well, hold on. People people can take their shots at me. I should be able to give back as good as I get. Oh, I, I'm not denying it, mate. I love you like a brother. It's all good. <laughs> I should be able to give as good as I get. And that is what I do. So we, I don't care. I'm going to toot my horn on that one. Give a spe- shit. Speaking of giving as we get, can we all have a, a, a round of applause? Oh, top spin. Is top no, spin no, in no. development, is it? 
that for once, Nicholas, it's not about you. <laughs> All right, I w- we'll come to the top spin five oh, being totally yeah. in development in a second. But I wanted to give a round of applause, everyone sitting on your on your phones or watching it on PC. Just do a little, you know, to Mr. Jeffrey Grubb, who, when he posted his rumor about early June show for State of Play, was attacked ferociously by oh, all the yeah. weirdos on Reset Era, and uh. he came back with a clap back. He brought that old thread back to life and he went i'll just wait for your apologies here which I'm yeah sure i'm sure there's going to be plenty of apologies in this thread oh, isn't there it was beautiful it was beautiful so mr jeffrey grubb Freaking ladies and gentlemen bunch, what a ledge what a just ledge. A bunch just a bunch of salty dickheads like seriously <laughs> just get a life like honestly um, like why does it bother them so much oh this guy them. just makes stuff up you know what even if i do make stuff up why does it bother you why <laughs> What effect does it have on your life? Even if I did make stuff up, let's just say I was smart enough to make up stuff that happens to come true. Why does it bother you and how does it affect your life? It just it's, it doesn't. This is it doesn't. So just let it go. Just get over it. Just deal with it. And yeah, Top Spin was in development. <laughs> Sucked in. Um now and guess what? There was a Marvel MMO in development and it just got cancelled. <laughs> Sucked in. Yeah, I'm really good at making be, stuff up. Some Australian I? slang. You're on I'm one so, today, I'm, bro. You're, I'm, you're so, fired I'm up. so good at making stuff up. Oh wow, how good am I? I'm like Nostradamus. I just like happen to just see this stuff in my dreams and talk about it. One quick update before we get into More community on. questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I just was reminded by by Resetera's uh, advertising there because uh, yeah, um, Xbox Zero does have a new advertising partner. Um, which is just sort of coming into effect this week-ish. Um, hopefully it will mean less of the weird Google Sense automated ads. Um, so, you know, there is an ad thread reporting, so keep an eye on things, but this is a partner that specifically works with gaming and media sites um, that we've partnered with. Oh, okay. Um, they're very nice guys, um, lots of good conversation. It's all set up, um, should be good for... Our users, you should see, if you see ads, they should be actually relevant to video gaming or technology rather than some of the more obscure stuff like wine tasting, if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, just Do we have the ability up. to put our own ads on the forum? Yeah, we, we do have house ads for the podcast, for You Have Me at Halo and stuff like that. So, okay. Yeah. So when, so when we get that other deal done, can we put ads for them on the forum? Yes, we could. Okay. Correct. Look, okay, Infinite good. Karma win cash prizes at Lucky Land slots. Yeah, I don't think it's kicked in yet. It's, it's no, still yeah, on, yeah. still in the test page. It will hit. It will hit soon. So um, yeah, yeah. It's just a heads up. Um, yeah. And Jesse will have some branding and things he has to say and do on his streams. Gonna be I'm fun. gonna try and get. I'll try and get you a shaker, Jesse. Play Raid Shadow I'll, Legends. I'll try and get you. I'll try and get you a free shaker. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay. community questions. Let's uh, let's see if we can fly through a lot of these because we definitely should yeah. have covered some of them when we were. Uh, we should have, and I and things. I have to go relatively soon to pick exactly. up exactly. Jason, so, go on. But he'll be watching from his hotel probably. <laughs> uh, okay, Dio game. Hi. It seems the pre E three lull is starting to set in. Not to worry. A good amount of news should be coming very soon. Trademark. Anyhow. We talk a lot about AAA bangers, but some of the freshest ideas come from when teams can make smaller experimental titles. Obsidian has found great success here, and Ninja Theory seems to be following suit. What's an Xbox studio you'd like to see take a crack at a smaller game? Personally, I think Playground could make a super awesome arcade racer using pre-existing Forcer assets. Hell, call up Sega and license Outrun. God, I feel like we get this question about smaller games every week. Look, we got it last week about, like, and we talked about Hive Busters and stuff. And the funny thing is, Dio Game, you mentioned Playground. Playground already did a super awesome arcade smaller racer called Forza Horizon 2 Presents Fast and the Furious, which was a smaller, more compact, secretly the best Forza Horizon game where all the cars were based on the movie. You had ludicrous narrating. The map was really nice and small and focused. It was amazing. Um... Mm. I love stuff like that. Me personally, and I know this is not going to apply to everyone else. I am in the 0.000001% minority on this. I would love if games were just more like that. Infamous no, First Light, Hive Busters, uh, Fast yep. and Furious, Forza Horizon. I would love if all gaming was basically just that. Because I am an old man that does not have the time to invest 
a hundred hours in Elden Ring and another 80 hours in Horizon Forbidden West and then another I just don't have that time I don't have that patience I don't have that attention span anymore just give me the just give me the infamous first lights and give me the hive busters give me that stuff I want more of that super polished high production but small compact expand alone type stuff that's the stuff I love I love that stuff what he said uh, <laughs> love it um, yeah, I, I, and I don't think you are it. in the the zero one one zero zero one percent. I think people want <laughs> people I, whatever that percentage was. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think people in general like need all those hours when they're trying to justify a sixty or seventy dollar game. But if, yeah. if 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 subscriptions become more of a thing, maybe they'll be more accepting to like a ten hour game or even a five hour you know big DLC. Uh, and by the way, uh, I would say I'm, I'm mostly with Dio game. They need, we need a new PGR. I just want some focus mm. tracks with kudos. Yes. Bring back kudos. Yep. Split second. Hey, if Disney, if Disney buys EA and they get like game publishing back under them again, and EA has racing studios, bring back split second, have split second too. Oh, you big God fan of split, split second. second. Oh, split second is so good and it's backwards compatible goes on sale frequently no excuse not to buy it on xbox it is it, it it's funny all these backwards compatible games they've effectively become xbox exclusives quite clever quite very smart clever. split second is exclusive to xbox <laughs> on current gen can't get a bigger exclusive than that split second <laughs> best it's the best so best so good but yeah, okay. on, on the subject of the pre E three lol, I I did put it out on Twitter earlier today. I have just finished the first draft earlier today of the uh traditional Xbox era get excited uh video. Um needs some small refinement and some sexy new things from pre drag, but we'll we'll have that in the week or so before launch to get yes. everybody in the mood. In the mood for the future. It's very much right things. though about the pre E three lol. You know how there's a you, you know how you know there's a pre E three lol? Because there's articles about Gene Park saying he's unsubscribing from Game Pass. That's how you know there's an E3, a pre E3 lull. Yeah. That's exactly how you know. And I'm serious right. because there's not a lot of news right now. So, because yeah. the, the, remember these sites, these sites, their whole existence is on engagement and clicks for ads and yeah. da, da 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 da. That's how it, SEO, which I still have no idea about SEO. Apparently, you know, I discovered that the reason you get articles about weirdly titled and framed is forza horizon 5 coming to playstation because apparently that's an seo driven thing because they go <laughs> they get access to google search results and the google search yep. results are forza horizon on playstation so they write articles about that or it, weirdly framed articles because they know it's not going to happen well you have to match a certain length because it's all about yeah. getting google to surface you kind of like with that like they do yeah, with YouTube. yeah yeah so you've got to hit the right length you've got to have yeah. enough content but not too much it's you know there's a whole yeah thing. it's weird and as we have said and demonstrated we have no idea how that stuff works and we fight against algorithms and all that sort of stuff to our own detriment so <laughs> there you go uh yes we covered that question extensively uh good old collingwood i wonder if he's going to be at the footy today he makes a comment sort of about the footy i wonder if he'll be there we need to meet up at the footy one day hello john nick and jesse and he didn't know abe was going to be here but yeah i'm sure he'd say hi to abe too <laughs> a week or so ago there was an incident where previous and cherished guest diana was outed by someone well known for participating in the console wars this person questioned her credentials as a gamer as she apparently had a low gamer score it was later shown that this person was a hypocrite as he barely finished any games in 2022. My question isn't about Diana or the incident itself, but on the <laughs> definition of a gamer. What or who is a gamer? What does being a gamer mean to you? Good old Collingwood. And then at the end, he's like, up the muddy blues. <laughs> he's, yeah, we're playing, we are playing Carlton today. That's, that is, we are playing <clears> the <throat> blues, the Carlton blues. And it's a very, very big game. Can't wait to go. Uh... What is a gamer? Yes, there was a thing about Diana, and yeah, yeah I I, it. it was it was it was not pleasant to read. Through yeah, that. it was a bit dumb, and you know, Zorka and I talked about it a little bit last week. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I think to myself, if Rocket League existed, 
I don't know, 15 years ago, my gamer score would be really low too. Yeah. But I'd have about but I'd have about 20,000 hours in Rocket League. Am I a gamer yeah. though? So like it's yeah, look, a gamer is not someone that has a high gamer score or whatever. A gamer is a someone who I would argue frequently plays video games and enjoys video games. Like <laughs> I think I think it's pr- that simple. Like yeah, and regardless of, of what platform, yeah, regardless of what that platform's on, they don't have to be on a console. Like some, there are some genuinely good mobile games out there that are well, really just, really good games. Sorry, I I, I thought you were t- you were done again. You know, you got to do, no. do it, take a bow or something, Nick, so I can tell. <laughs> But, you know, something that uh, I wanted to just bring up, because, like, I, I think a lot of people missed it. Diana actually did post, like, some of her hours she played in just a handful of games, right? Like, from, you know, mm-hmm. from a couple of years before she she admitted. But, like, yeah, I played almost, almost exclusively Halo 5 for, like, uh, multiplayer for, for uh, really, really from the time that launched right up until, I think, Game Pass started doing day one games. Uh, that's when I started to try other things. And... Uh, there's a lot of gamers like that. And, and at the and end of the day, like you just like th- this gatekeeping is just, I think it's gross anyways. Like you just, you want more people in, just bring them in. And, and sometimes they just come in and all, all my son does is play Minecraft, but you know what? Someday maybe he'll play other things. And, and uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it was kind of And, and that's and what happens. It sometimes yeah. it's a gateway. So my son started just with Roblox as well and yeah. Minecraft. And that's all he ever played. But guess what? Now he plays Halo Infinite. He loves Halo Infinite. He plays yeah. the campaign. He plays multiplayer against the bots. He plays Rocket League. For a six-year-old, he's amazing at Rocket League. Uh, he plays Astrobot. He wants to turn on my PlayStation to play Astrobot. He plays um, Goat. Oh my God! They both kids discovered Goat Simulator. So because they <laughs> yeah, watch my, YouTube kids, my boy kids, loves Goat Simulator. Oh, because because they watch YouTube kids a lot, <laughs> and there's a lot of kids that stream themselves playing their certain games. I think they saw videos with Goat Simulator, and they're like, "Oh, Baba, can we get Goat Simulator?" I'm like, "Guess what, kids? It's on Game Pass." <laughs> so like, <gasps> downloaded it on Ooh. both their Xboxes, and now they're just smashing Goat Simulator. And I'm like, these kids don't even care about like how a game plays. Exactly. Like at it's all, all about like, fun this, and silliness this, to them. There's a gener- it scares me that there's a generation of gamers who are growing up on games that don't play well and are like janky, broken messes of games, and it's terrifying to me. <laughs> like, Hello, I just, uh, no, standards. I, no standards, mate, unfortunately, uh, but there ooh, you go. As someone who grew up in the era of arcades where the games were like tight as like anything and like played so well that that is all i know that's all i want i just want game that's why i love mark of the ninja anyone who's played mark of the ninja like man that game is just so just feels so tight to play and control you know the og god of war games like the the playstation 2 ones and even god of war 3 you know i I love that uh, back then they didn't sacrifice how the game feels for the animations so kratos could be halfway through swinging his things and if you just press that block the animation just cuts and you block i love that that's that is what i have always loved and it just terrifies me that there's all these kids growing up right now on stuff like roblox and goat simulator very depressing it's very uh, it's great great it's great that they love these games it's fantastic that they're into these games and they love these games. I'm just, from my personal perspective, as someone who loves games that feel good, it's terrifying to me. That's all. Yeah. Absolutely. Go, Abe. Abe was going to say something. I was just going to say, uh, my son, for whatever reason, for a little while, was into Hello Neighbor and Five Nights at Freddy's. And I I have not figured out how those IPs took off the way they did. He wanted the toys. Yeah. So he'd watch yeah, the streamers yeah, yeah. and then wanted the toys for that. That's really They're made more for than kids. The games. Kids are different. Kids yeah. are built different the, to us. Like the, the Talk about Jake. That game is... Uh, I've never I, even heard about that. That's like Hello Neighbor. Jake? That I, like I was like I was watching him try to play it and try to figure it out. It, it was like a five out of ten game. Like I cannot figure he said, out. He said talk that... about Jake. 
No, talk about oh, Jake. Oh, Jank. I thought he said talk about Jake. Oh, and I also like, thought he said Jake. About... I was like... Yeah, wait, wait who's... let's talk about Jake. Wait, who's Jake? Is that some new <laughs> game? My son's <laughs> like, name is some... Jacob. <laughs> you know, I was like, what, 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 what about Jacob? What's he done? No, Jake. He's just uh, okay, stealing all it. the candy. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, my kids play Sorry, Roblox. Jake. The games, the games that they play on Roblox will just stop working or crash, and they're just like, eh, they don't care. <laughs> they like, the next thing. They're just used to it. They're just used to broken games. They don't, they don't care about that stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, and here's AAA developers being like, hey, hey, can't wait for about 15, 20 years from now. <laughs> we don't have to worry about our games working properly because <laughs> all those Roblox gamers are older now, and they don't care. Oh man. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. A gamer is anyone who plays video games with relative frequency and enjoys them. That's what I think. I think that's a fair Good. definition. Yes, they may not all be hardcore gamers that sink two and a half thousand into a game about cars hitting a soccer ball. <laughs> but that's okay. They don't all have to be that way. Everyone everyone likes... You know, my wife, I, I would no longer consider my wife a gamer. She doesn't play games anymore. But in her younger days, she used to play, believe it or not, Mortal Kombat and Dead or Alive. Of all the video games she could have played when she was younger, Mortal Kombat and Dead or Alive. Why? I don't know. They were just the next, games that she, <laughs> The next community what? question is about this exact same topic, by the way. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. From your brother. <laughs> Isn't that the one from your brother? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Jesse brother. Happy Memorial Day week. Happy Memorial Day weekend, Jess. I don't know what that is. Happy reconciliation. Happy reconciliation day weekend, Nick. I don't even know what the hell that is. Is that supposed <gasps> to be an Australian thing? I don't even know what that is. John, uh, happy Saturday, bruv. Glad to see you back. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. R regarding good old Collingwood's question, I say a gamer is anyone who plays video games. <laughs> I don't care if it's occasionally because they work in the industry and don't have tons of time for it like Diana, or if it's damn near constant with freaks like Zorka or Jesse, or if you're a bitch ass console warrior who plays more Twitter than you do video games. You're all gamers. Now stop trying to out people for their gamer scores and get off Twitter. Not you, Nick. Would never want to try and upend your life that much. The man tweets more a day than a hummingbird flaps its wings. Uh, P.S. It's just an exaggeration for comedic purposes. I know you don't tweet that much, Nick, but I do blame you and Grub for why I had to turn the Twitter notifications off on my phone. Wait, did you have? Hold on, did you have notif? Did he have notifications on when I tweet? Why? He's hmm. pretty old, so he probably doesn't know how to turn things off until I tell him. You're a celebrity <laughs> now. No, that's and I don't think I tweet that much. I don't think you, I tweet that much. No, you tweet the, most, the most out of all of us. I think. Oh, out of out of the Xbox era crew, I tweet yeah. the most. But relative to my peers in this sphere, I don't think I tweet very much. Perhaps right, we're only at we're only at question three of like uh, <laughs> nine. So go. Uh, okay, proven. Hello, John, Nick, and Jesse, and Ape. There has been a recent uptick in clickbait slash low effort journalism from some pretty reputable sites. <laughs> we should have talked about this one earlier too. Yeah. We all know about the Kotaku fiasco where they tried to insinuate there was a Game Pass burnout after two people with blue check marks declared they were unsubbing from the service. I also just read a very lazy and unresearched article wondering out loud if Xbox was leaving PC sales on the table by putting PC games on Game Pass. I spent 45 seconds Googling and found out that's absolutely not the case. Uh, CC of Thieves selling 5 million on Steam. Are people just bored? Is this a last-ditch effort to put jabs into Xbox while they're temporarily down? I expect this kind of discourse from Twitter spaces, but I'd hope actual websites would stoop this low. Well, yeah, we sort of talked about this. It's all about feeding SEO. It's all about engagement and getting clicks. They know, like, in the end, I'm sure it wasn't Gene Park's intention. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't his intention. But in the end, his voice is loud enough where it could get clicks. I mean... If someone as nothing as me can have articles written about him, then Gene Park is probably going to get articles written about him because he's actually someone in the industry. Um, so while we're in this pre-E3 lull, these sites need news. They need stuff for people to click on. That, that's that's yep. the whole purpose. 
And I'm not saying clickbait. I'm just saying they need stuff for people it's to content. click on new stuff. It's- can, can so, I just uh, throw another rant uh, for 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 Xbox platforms in general? Stop worrying about narratives. <laughs> it's like it's like they get you know worrying about whether the media is going to get a couple more shots at. Like I, I just feel like I feel like a lot of the community is still feeling like 2013 and like the media is going to break <laughs> the Xbox platform. They just spent they're trying to spend eighty billion dollars in like two years on gaming companies. Uh, they're two trillion dollar corporation. When they start releasing the AAA games next year, let them. You know, if they don't, if they don't know how to sell the platform at that point in time, that's really their fault. Uh, stop worrying about it. It's like who cares? It's the like these things like Kotaku. Kotaku is not going to impact Microsoft. What's going to impact Microsoft is those games releasing next year and being good. That's it. Yeah. So and you know. and it just makes me even more mm-hmm. pleased about the the route that we've taken as as xbox era like we we don't have any seo experts right occasionally we'll get it right somehow and we'll suddenly be like why did why did that article perform so well but that's not what we're there for we're there for the community we don't we're not profit driven right and you've got to remember that there isn't a lot of money in video game journalism there just Mm. isn't right so these other businesses and companies uh, they're out there to, yeah, we've got to post something today. We've got to post a quick opinion. We've got to post something, anything that's vaguely newsworthy because they need people to click on their website because they have to pay the people that write these things. Otherwise, they can't function. We're doing things a little differently. Hopefully, we can keep mm. that up. But the fact that we've you know, got on Metacritic this week is testament to our approach, I think. We'll see. But anyway, yeah. We kind of talked to the rest of that rant about yep. lazy articles to mm. death. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Somnia. Happy weekend, John, Nick, and Jesse and Abe. Hope everyone stateside is having a good and safe Memorial Day weekend. With the recent rumor of Indiana Jones being multi platform from Jez, though I know Nick says he hears differently, I was curious if you think if it is in fact multi platform, did Microsoft prioritize getting it on Game Pass rather than a full exclusive? Since the game was signed before the acquisition of Bethesda, perhaps during negotiations with Lucas, they felt it was best to go that route. Thanks, guys. You know what we're going to have to do? Jesse is going to have to have the community questions. And when he hears us talk about a topic that's in the community, say, hey, guys, there's a community question on this. Because we spoke about this right at the start of the show. And I That feel is bad normally now. my plan. But then much like you guys, I forget to do it because I'm doing so much other stuff. So, I need to do better. Um, yeah. And it's funny, like... Isn't it funny how I feel like the industry as a whole just needs constant news? This Indiana Jones thing was a thing late last year in August when I talked about Indiana Jones being exclusive. It was an it was a rumor mill, and I put it on Twitter. And I think I'm going to search, but I reckon there was even a thread on Reddit about it back then because now there's a Reddit thread about Indiana Jones not being exclusive. So that's going to be. Very, very interesting because we obviously got the news that Indiana Jones Five they tweeted out with that. Yeah, cool they looking, did it that, that image is amazing. Star Wars that image, that image is amazing. By the way, um, that there's going to be an Indiana Jones movie next year. Um, it Harrison would be Ford probably, in a wheelchair. Being, being yeah, it, it, it would be prudent. <laughs> of them to get the indiana jones game out next year if they can to coincide with the movie i feel yeah um again i you guys you all know me i'm gonna stick to my guns even up against jez i'm gonna stick to it and if i'm wrong well my source was wrong i got told indiana jones is exclusive i'm sticking to it just in case anyone's watching that's like Indiana Jones, who's that? If you're, uh, you know, 15 or below, Indiana Jones is Harrison <laughs> Ford playing a, a, an archaeologi- archaeologist uh, slash adventurer, much like Nathan Drake in the Uncharted games on PlayStation. And uh, they're making a video game, Machine Games, just in oh. case you're living under a rock. Well, didn't know that. He's a lot. Though. He's yeah. a lot less of a, uh, a, a mass a murderer, sociopathic murderer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people think, oh, the the Indiana Jones deal would have been signed before the acquisition. Probably, but that that also doesn't mean Microsoft can't then come back and be like, whoa, well, whoa, here's 
What? I've just seen someone in the chat, and I'm presuming it's a response to my comment about describing what Indiana Jones is, and they've labelled it so a rip off. The original, <laughs> the original. A rip off of what? That's what I mean. Indiana Jones is the original Lara Croft, Nathan Drake. Yeah. That's who Indiana Jones is. Okay. Indiana From Jones the is the first one. <laughs> yes, Man. Indiana Jones is the first one. Like, so Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider was just a rip off of sort of a ripoff of indiana jones not to the same extent like tomb raider had dinosaurs in it um (laughs) uncharted was more your direct uh emulation of indiana jones in video game form having said that there had been indiana jones games in the past um but Uncharted was more your Indiana Jones as a video game. The irony then being that they made a movie of Uncharted, which is just an Indiana Jones movie. Billy did uh, say that he was just joking. Yeah, I've just seen. I'm letting him off just this once. I He's saw the Uncharted him. movie. It was okay. I watched it last week, funnily enough, and it was... It was okay. It's a bit mediocre. Like I said it was okay. I didn't say, oh my God, it was amazing. It was okay, okay. okay. Average, average. It was okay. The problem is I really like Tom Holland and I really like Mark Wahlberg. So that helped. Uh, Had it just I been, can, yeah. I can leave Mark Wahlberg a no, lot of I the like time. Mark Wahlberg. In, in most, I like Mark most Wahlberg. things, I'm like, oh, Mark Wahlberg's in it. And I really like Tom Holland. Um, I still think they were bad casting choices for those yeah. roles. But I like those actors, and I'm fine with what they did with those characters. Um, but if I had my choice, I still would have gone with Nathan Fillion and um, what's his name that plays uh, J. John Jameson. Yeah, I know who you mean. It's gonna be Sam Elliott. No, no, the guy Sam that plays J. No, the guy that no. plays J. John Jameson in Spider Man. Oh, J.K. Simmons. No, J.K. Simmons. Sam, Sam Elliott, the big. Moustached guy from A Star Is Born. He's got the voice and talks like this, boy. This is I think, you I think J.K. Simmons would be a great Sully. Yeah, I love J.K. Simmons, so I'm fine with this. I, like J- I think J.K. Choice. Simmons would be a good Sully. I'm sure there's other great choices for Sully. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that if you want, if they want a big name that could also play the role well, I think J.K. Simmons and Nathan Fillion as a pairing would have been incredible for Uncharted. Yeah, Maybe the little really short movie they, they did with Nathan Fillion was... Ah, oh, I thought that was pretty good. For a fan movie, I thought that was pretty good. They would have been my choices. Um, but most Before people we go to with... the next um, question, there what? was breaking news that I sent oh. to John. Um, he did. It turns it? out Rare is as incompetent as 343, and they are extending the current season of Sea of Thieves by two months so that the next season can be Xbox in the best shape possible. That's, That's like eight news. weeks. That's eight weeks, people. Yep. That's like news. <laughs> I don't care about Sea of Thieves. One of their their most successful IP of the last generation. I don't, I don't know. True. I didn't buy it, so I can't be that successful. Should we should we do the what's nobody. going on over there segment? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All okay. right. How many how many community questions have we got left? Uh, uh, not that many. Four. Not that many. Three. Uh, Three. Kate forever. Evening, John, and good morning, Nick. Have you guys ever wondered why females in science fiction media have the worst haircuts? Take the Halo TV show, for example, with Quan. She has something of a half mullet. I mean, mullets are always bad regardless. Uh, with a buzz on the sides, short on the front and in the back, a long ponytail. Her hairstylist needs to be... I don't think it's her hairstylist. I think it's the show's hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, future hair. This is how hair is even, in the future. Yeah, even different. everyone's... She didn't have that hair in the flashback. She only had yeah, I saw that. I noticed time. that. Yes. Uh, even everyone's favorite space princess, Leia Organa, uh, has two giant cinnamon bun curls on the side of her head. Just bizarre. Anyway, have a great weekend, guys. I mean... I, 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 I mean, I'm not even going to really comment that much. I'm just going to say, okay, Cade. Keep us informed <laughs> that, on this. That's... that's, that's <laughs> look, It's you have to understand. Th- these are actors playing in roles i i don't know if they would have chosen those haircuts for themselves i don't know what their personal taste is that's what the role required they do that's what they did i'm sure a lot of the dudes in mad max fury road that have out their crazy hairstyles probably don't have those hairstyles in real life either yeah that's just what the movie required 
in the end, it's a personal taste thing. I and have also, when I was Lee, little, when I was little, Lyers I liked has become Leia's more, hair. Yeah, it, <laughs> Leia's has become iconic, really, yeah, arguably. It has. So, you know, Heavily giant cosplayed. cinnamon buns were totally in. Rachel, friends, the yeah. Leia. The Leia fantasy. Look what Ross wanted. That's what Ross wanted. Ross wanted her dressed <laughs> yeah. up as Leia. Oh my and god! Wasn't it, wasn't it then Chandler's mum? We yeah, almost got out so of this episode without <laughs> friends. We were so close. I, like I, I feel I like try one in no. <laughs> he saw his own mum because yeah. Chan because Chandler yeah, planted yeah, it in his um, head. Um, um, I just said planted instead of planted. Oh my god! That's right. Um, planted is the correct planted, way to pronounce I said planted. Planted. The mobile planted. <laughs> Um. Okay. Next. Qu- two more questions left. Right, I said about two. two and a half hours, and that's what we're heading towards. Colbert. Oh, Haven't ho- heard from Colbert for a while. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Colbert reached out to me about somehow we ended up. He ended up unfollowing me on Twitter by accident, and I didn't know. I thought I pissed him off because I'm very good at pissing people off. He rejoined the Discord, and everything is all sorted. But okay. anyway, that's a side oh, story. <laughs> uh, short question. What's your reaction to those weirdos calling for the FTC or foul because you are now part of the Metacritic rating? I personally can't stop laughing about those ludicrous individuals. See, we should have asked. We should have. Yeah, I know. I know. We need to get. We need to get I better. I will go at this. through before, and I will make a, a list, and I'll have it up. Oh, I'll, I'll do God, the work. Again. Like almost all of these questions could have been throughout the show. Literally almost all every of them. single one. Every single yeah, one. look, I mean, we, we said it before. There, there's a million and one websites on Metacritic called PlayStation something. And they get to review. And, you know, um, you know, we may have had a look at a couple of them in the past. And a lot of them just make sure that they review PlayStation games nine and above, regardless of what that game is. And then when you see them review third party games, they're like five, six and seven. <laughs> and like there's hardly any nines for those. That's, I guess that's part of the gamble that you take. All you have to know is that I have fought with Jesse many, many times trying to implement a ban on 10 out of 10s on video <laughs> games. Yeah. And Jesse does not listen to me. But I said that I would prefer we do not give 10s to any game. Any game at all, regardless of whether it's Microsoft First Party or not. I think 10... I would like to be the final word on whether we allow a 10 on a game. I am just old school in the belief. Well, I, I just think too many games get tens now. Everything gets a ten. Everything. Like there's no, there's no like. I don't, and again, maybe I'm just old, and it's old school thinking. You are a old. Ten is special. A ten is special. It should be reserved for special games. Like you shouldn't just give a ten to everything. You mentioned Mario Odyssey again, but that's yeah. the only one that deserves oh, a ten. Right, that's okay. the only Next game. Question. Next question. The only game like too many people give out tens. Like it's just, ah, uh, give it a nine point five. If a game is like that good, give it a nine point five. That's fine. Like I've like God of War, right? Let's be honest. When God of War Ragnarok comes out, you're gonna be seeing all these websites lining up to give it a ten, regardless of what it's actually like. They're just gonna give it a ten. I loved God of War 2018. You can, even though I'm permabanned on reset, you can find my post on there where I give God of War 2018 my game of the year. I voted for it for game of the year. But it's not a 10 out of 10 game. Not even close. It has too much wrong with it to be a 10 out of 10 game. But it's got pretty graphics and it's got lots of cutscenes, so let's give it a 10. Like, let's just, come on, let's get our standards better than that. Like, let's just... Let's take this stuff a I bit mean, more seriously. I gave Elden Ring a 9.8 because I had a few significant but minor issues. <sighs> well, you know, it's just video <laughs> games, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you, you're on a, you're just... on a roll today, Nick. You're like, uh, you're like you know you're what it is? Up it's, for... it's probably just me releasing frustration from all the just crap I've been getting on Twitter and reset. Just smidge. Like just. Whatever, man. <laughs> a little bit ranty, a little bit on edge. You know, let it Guess out. what? Top spin, top spin fives in development, huh? huh? Isn't it? <laughs> oh, right. The source, the source right. is questionable. Deep it's a questionable Musa. source. We better Musa. lock this thread. It's a that questionable source. source. Refused. Yeah, I refuse <laughs> to be vetted. I refused flat out. Questionable source. I oh. believe Creaky Legs has. Jason Schreier said top spins in development. Anyone? Well, well, maybe it's real now. 
I'll just <laughs> read the last one, John. <laughs> okay, Creaky Leaks. Hello, lads. Since Sony seems to retain the marketing rights to COD this year and presumably next year, when the Activision deal closes in September slash October, <laughs> uh, I get that joke. I understood that reference. Uh, what are the odds Microsoft just uses Xbox Game Studios Publishing to put Modern Warfare 2 and the 2023 COD in Game Pass? Uh, I don't know what that contract looks like, but the deal is between Activision and Sony, not Xbox Game Studios Publishing. It can't be that outlandish to think a loophole exists to do it, right? I mean, did the MLB simply force Sony with their ultimate say in the contract to let them make deals with Game Pass, or did they also find a loophole? Maybe Sony doesn't write these anti-Game Pass deals in as many games as we think. Their Call of Duty marketing deal also predated Game Pass by over two years. Which, yes, I'm sorry, Creaky Leaks. Yeah. He's already tweeted about this. He, he did tweet yes. about it. Yeah, he, he already tweeted about it. Yeah. Um, We're sorry. Yeah. There, there might not be anything in there. Like, it's it's possible. It is possible mm-hmm. that there is nothing in that contract that says it can't be on Game Pass. So, uh, if if the deal closes before Modern Warfare 2 comes out, there's I think there's a possibility it could come out on Game Pass. I think it's possible. Um... I just don't know if it's likely. That's all. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. I hope it is, because then I don't have to buy it. True story. I, I, hope, I hope it is, and then I don't have to buy it. Yeah. So, we're at the end. That's all the community mm, questions. Yeah. Nick has a football game to go to. It's yeah. 20 past one in the morning for me. Going to have a burger. Eight. One Gonna last. Burger. Probably that. regretting oh, turning his aircon off. Yep. He just oh, <laughs> one then. <laughs> One last super Patrick. chat. Nick, what did you think of mine and my wife's shrimp wedding attire? Can we can we get a link to this, Patrick, before we close out? There must, we, be, a tweet. There must be a tweet out. or something that I missed. I, I, you have to understand, I have notifications turned off on Twitter. So the only way I will see a reply to you on a tag on Twitter is if I happen to check and I scroll through my notifications. So a lot of people that like reply and abuse me and stuff, I don't see it. So... And a lot of people do it while I'm asleep. So there's you a lot of stuff I just flat out don't see. We don't allow tweet or links in chat because of all the bots. So if you could DM it to someone, I can get it up at some point. Yeah. Shrimp or tie. Uh, uh, you know what? It's actually possible that I did see this tweet and it's an old one because my memory's now started to come back. And I thought if it's the tweet I think I remember seeing, I thought I liked it. I thought I clicked <laughs> the like button at the very least, I think. But... Maybe Patrick can tag me again on Twitter. Uh, ah, he said, you replied to it. I'll retweet it again. Well, there you go. See, I did reply to it. So my memory is not, it's not too, too bad. My memory is okay. But again, be aware, like back back before I had, like when I used to only have like a thousand followers or whatever, I left my Twitter notifications on. I can tell you the precise moment I turned off Twitter notifications. Uh, it was when I leaked Elden Ring footage. <laughs> and that tweet went mental and I just turned off. I said, I'm going to turn off my notifications now and I'm never going to turn them back on. And I have not. So how long ago was that? Like a year and a half, two years ago that I leaked the Elden Ring footage? I have not turned my Twitter notifications back on ever since then. So... Some people that are replying to me to abuse me, some people that are tagging me to say, hey, sometimes I won't see it because my notifications are off because my phone buzzes too much. So I apologize in advance. And to those who were abusing me and I didn't see it, well, sucked in. (laughs) I didn't see it. Well, Um, on on that note, on that note, we can probably wrap things up. Um, So... What are we now? We are on the 29th of May, so we have got approximately two weeks. one normal show left, one pre-normal show, and then we've got the live stream for the June showcase. So, Wait, what? Lots... We're doing on, a normal show on the, on the Saturday the 11th, and then the showcase yeah. is on the 12th. So that's two more shows. Yeah, oh, I thought you said you named three shows then. And I'm like, well, wait, three? The third would be the showcase live stream. Here's me trying to be clear yeah. and succinct, and you're just you just you were fine sticking your Australian oar in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, know. no, I got it. Come now. on, I got it now. 
Right. I got it now. But yes, next next so week's show is number one. Next week's show is number one. Correct. And then correct. there's the two after that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But we're looking yep. forward to it. I think we're going to have some cool plans. Um, last piece of housekeeping I'll mention is uh, our darling Kickstarter is way overdue an update. I will be penning stuff uh, and posting a, a rather large and lengthy update tomorrow at some point. So keep an eye out for that if you uh, backed it. Um, got some good news mostly to share, but we're still waiting on a few of our contributors that we are chasing. You know who you are. Um, yep. And yeah, well, I'll, I'll share some more details on that. Yeah, um, M- MVG. If you're listening in the background because you're washing your car or something, we need your contribution. If you're listening, <laughs> <in>. Rand, <laughs> um, Rand, Rand, we need yours, Rand. <laughs> Grub's moving house, so I can forgive him. He's busy, but um, yeah, we're nearly there. So Grub um, will be that- on in the second half of June. Oh, After cool. the showcase, we'll get we'll get Jeff Grub back on, on to talk about all mm. the fun. My husband. Had. Oh, good. You guys are weird. Um, so let's call it like it is. Big thank you to the 200 plus people that have hung out with us this evening. It's been an absolute blast. Um, and we'll see you next week. And Maybe. remember, guys, Top Spin 5 in development. Remember where you heard it first. Nick, the questionable source. Very, very questionable. That's yeah. true. He is a very questionable man. Super right. questionable. Vouch for that. Adios, everyone. Big thank you, Abe, for joining us again this week. Thank you for Ciao for now. <laughs>